Hey guys, thank you so much for your interest in this course. This is about learning Kafka from scratch using reactive programming. This course is only for backend Java developers who want to learn Kafka from scratch. Since it's a reactive series, I assume you already know reactive programming very well. If not, I would say skip this course, do not waste your money and this course will not be helpful. But if you are still interested, please check these two courses where you can learn reactive programming and webflex from scratch. Pause this video and quickly check this syllabus. This is what we will learn in this course. This is all about learning Kafka from the beginning and becoming very comfortable with the Kafka. So setting up Kafka, then using Kafka with the Java reactive programming, setting up Kafka cluster, the best practices, how to do batch and parallel processing, error handling specific to um, event-driven architecture, then transaction, finally using Spring with the Kafka, how to write integration test, etc. Then finally we will be writing, we will be doing one assignment using Spring and Kafka. Our assignment will be more or less like this. We will be having a couple of services. We will be tracking the user's behavior. Then we will be doing some analysis and we will be presenting it to the business team in a very high level. What are the trending products? Something like that. That is the idea of this assignment. One super important thing here is this course is not about design patterns like Saga, CQRS, etc. Actually, in order for me to cover those design patterns, I should have started with the event-driven architecture first. I should be aware of the various challenges in the event-driven architecture. Then only we can talk about the design patterns. So this course is the first step to discuss Kafka. Then in the series, as part of the next set of courses, we will be talking about various design patterns. Okay guys, let's get started. In our microservices architecture, we will have multiple services talking to one another like this. It might look good on the paper, but in the real life, this communication could be a little bit messy, something like this. This is order service. When someone places an order, it will accept the request. Then it will immediately call the payment service to detect payment. It will call inventory service to detect inventory. Then it will call the notification service to send the note email, etc. We do all these communications synchronously. That is the user's request that will be completed only if the order service receives the response from everyone. Each service has its own request response data structure. So this order service has to be aware of that. Also, if this service is slow, then this service has to wait for the response. It will affect the overall processing time. We have to worry about timeout pattern, retry pattern, etc. Not only that, also in the future, Business will come and ask us, hey, we are planning to add a recommendation in the order workflow. So can you call this service and provide the details as and when someone places an order? Something like this. Now this service has to worry about another service, another request response data structure, etc. It's not really flexible in this way. Also in the synchronous communication, each service has to be available. If one of these services is not available and if you are not handling that properly here, then we might throw 500 internal server error to the client. And at this point, we simply lost the client request. These are the some of the problems we have and we just discussed this. So synchronous complex communication, one service performance might affect another service. And the downstream services need to be aware of all their upstream services, location, request, response, data structure, etc. And it's not flexible if you want to introduce some new service in the workflow, which might come off and depends on the application, business requirements, etc. Upstream services have to be available. 
and there is a very good chance that we might lose the request in case of in um, 500 internal server error in that case we simply delegate we ask the caller to retry now let's see if event driven microservices could help us event driven microservices is an architectural pattern which focuses particularly on loosely coupled and asynchronous communication among microservices like this we use some event bus like apache kafka pulsar through which we publish events or messages maybe it also looks good on paper here who knows you know what let's consider the same exact scenarios we just talked about let's review our first concern was synchronous complex communication here we do not have anything like that in fact event driven is all about asynchronous communication we also said that one service performance might affect another service. Again, this is completely asynchronous. If this service is slow, it will not affect this service performance because there is no direct connection between these two. Then we said downstream services need to be aware of all the upstream services location request response data structure. If this is order service, what it has to do is that as and when someone places an order, it has to raise an event that's it it does not have to really worry about where the inventory service is where the payment service is and in which format they are expecting the data is it easy to add a new service into the workflow of course yes let's imagine that currently we do not have a recommendation service and we want to add a new service which is interested in consuming the order events we can simply add a new service which can directly start consuming the order events without affecting other microservices what if other microservices are not available that's totally fine let's imagine that this is order service and we receive the request we simply we have to respond back saying that we have received your request and we are processing your request that's it we, we place an event here even if other microservices are not available that's totally fine when they come up they will be consuming that event even if this microservice receives the request and while processing it crashed again we are not losing the request here we can simply ask the even um, streaming platform to re-deliver the message one more time so that we can reprocess that so here we do not lose the request so we might immediately be like wow that's it then let's start building even driven microservices not so fast first we have to see how it works what are the challenges involved etc that is what this entire course is about there are many event streaming platforms then why kafka kafka is one of the popular and widely used event streaming platform in fact we use it at work many other famous companies like netflix uber walmart etc they all use kafka it is open source then it's highly available, horizontally scalable, and we can ingest large volume of data and we can easily achieve low latency, high throughput. It is also highly resilient, actually. So in this course, we will be setting up one Kafka cluster with multiple Kafka brokers and we will be having one producer application and consumer application. We will be keep on producing messages and consuming messages. During the process, I will be bringing these Kafka brokers up and down and you will see that it will not affect the perform application performance and our application, it will still be producing messages and consuming messages. It's not just a theory and I, I will not just be showing in this slide in C, right? We will be setting this up and we can see all these things in the action. In the real life, we will be running multiple Kafka servers together as a cluster. We as a developer, we do not have to really worry about it. We can see this as a complete black box. We can produce messages and consume messages. However, in this course, I try to talk about the internals as well and we will be setting up the cluster ourselves with Docker. At this time of recording this course, 99% of the websites out there might talk about another software called Zookeeper. We needed this Zookeeper software to run Kafka. It acts like a manager for Kafka. but 
there is a new version of Kafka called K-Raft in which we do not need the zookeeper. It is production ready recently and that is what we use in this course. Basically one of the Kafka server will be acting like a manager. So we do not need the zookeeper. So I am saying this is mainly because when you read some blog post etc you might come across this term zookeeper etc which is not required anymore. This is just for your information. Hey guys in this section we are going to set up Kafka for our local development testing and learning. I would like to tell you right away that this is what our goal in this section setting up Kafka in our local nothing else. Things will still not be very clear that is totally okay please do not panic. For example what is the use of this command what is the use of this property without explaining this guy moves on to the next lecture you might think like that. I would say please be patient. This is mainly because to fully understand we have to connect various dots. So we will talk about the individual dots first then we will eventually connect all these dots and things will make sense later. That is why. Okay with that expectation let's move on. So what we need to set up Kafka. Kafka itself was developed using mostly Java plus Scala. To set up Kafka we need to have Java installed. Then we need to download the binaries, unzip it and un add the bin directory to the path variable. That's it. We should be good. As I had mentioned earlier I would prefer Docker for setting up Kafka. There are a couple of Docker images I had considered first. This one is from Confluent and this is also famous Bitnami. Size wise this is huge and this is good. It supports the new K-Raft mode but they do not support M1 Mac. As you may know Mac CPU architecture is different. So the AMD 64 based Docker images might not work as expected in the new Mac. So after considering all these options I decided we can create our own Docker image. It's super simple in anyway. It can also provide some options for us to modify slightly to help with our learning. So I have created a simple Docker image for all of us. Before I share the Docker image with you in case you do not want to use Docker for some reason this is the step we have to follow. Just google for Kafka download and go to um, Kafka Apache Arc downloads this look on this site and select the binaries. So basically I copied the link and I directly used it in the docker file. So now if you click on this right it will be downloading a 100 MB tar uh, zip file. Okay. So we have to unzip it and uh, we can start using this. I downloaded and I extracted. I'm going to the path um, where I have downloaded via my terminal. So let's check uh, what we have inside. So this is what I see bin config libs etc. If I go inside the bin directory here I would be seeing a few dot sh files Kafka server start. So this is what we would be using to start the Kafka server and we have Kafka topic to create topic topic something like a message queue. Okay you can assume like that for now. Okay so we have console producer console consumer to uh, to create our producer and uh, to create our consumer to, con to consume the messages. Okay. So if you add this directory to the path variable then you should be able to execute all these uh, scripts um, from any location in your machine. You know that. For example if I want to create Kafka topic then I have to do this way. Okay. So currently it says that hey you have to use these options to create a topic. That's what it says. Okay. At least it knows that. Okay. Which is good. So if you are on a windows then go inside the corresponding windows directory here you would be seeing the all the batch um, scripts here okay okay so let's come out of this bin directory so what else we have we have the config directory okay let's go inside the config directory. So here I am seeing producer properties, consumer properties, zookeeper properties etc. As I had mentioned earlier we are not going to be uh, talking about zookeeper here. Okay. So we are interested in this k-raft. 
so let's go inside the k raft so here we have few property files broker controller server so what is the difference among all these so what is the difference between broker and the server so you might be having this kind of questions okay so we can talk about that later okay so for now we are interested in the server dot properties so when you start the kafka server we have to provide the path where the server dot properties is present and here you can update the properties you can based on the value you provide kafka server will behave accordingly for now in the first few sections of this course we are interested in creating this topic producing messages consuming messages we are interested in the basic stuff once we have familiarized ourselves with the basic stuff then we can talk about the kafka cluster how it works in the real life etc hey guys in this lecture let's talk about our kafka docker image i have already created and share pushed the docker image to the docker docker hub we can directly start pulling and start using the docker image which will work for all of us in mac linux windows etc but i would still like to uh, explain this with you so that if you want to modify or, or create something on your own it will be helpful i have already shared all the resources so please download everything and we are particularly in interested in the very first directory 01 kafka setup you should be seeing that okay so let's create a workspace directory an empty directory and copy the the first 01 kafka setup directory okay so if you expand this you should be seeing these two directories if you check the image here we can see the docker file i am using java 17 as the base image i am downloading the kafka the tar file then i extract this once i have extracted i do not need this file so i am simply removing this so that it will save some space it will reduce the size okay then when you extract it this is the name we will have actually okay i do not like this name 2.13 something like this so i am simply changing the name to kafka then we will have the kafka bin directory right i am just adding this to the path the, here i am having i am creating some work directory i simply named named this as learning if you want to change it you can change it okay then i am adding this runner.sh file which is here if you check the runner.sh it's basically super simple actually okay so the very first thing what i am doing here is i am setting something called a cluster id okay so what is cluster id so if i run this this is basically one kafka server instance instance right one docker container one instance so multiple docker containers or multiple kafka servers they all can run together and form one cluster okay similarly a large organization can have multiple kafka cluster so each and every cluster is expected to have one unique id okay so this is what we are setting here okay also when multiple kafka servers when they form a cluster they all will be talking to one another that time they have to present this information something like this hey i am part of this cluster are you also part of this cluster something like this so for that they need to know that their id actually okay so this is super important so this is what we are setting this up first so i am using an environment variable called kafka cluster id either we can pass this as an environment variable to to our um, docker container or if it's not passed i am creating one random cluster id okay either we have to set this otherwise it will be generated at random so this is super important cluster id okay then we store is the Mm, sorry we format the storage okay uh, there is one command to format the storage this 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 is required for the very first time when you start a new kafka server new kafka broker okay when you start the very first time the server right it requires certain directories to be or files to be present remember kafka is a stateful application you have to imagine this as a as a like a database it's a stateful application it expects that in files directories to be present so this is what this command does okay also if if this command sees that 
the files are already created it will be ignoring this okay it's basically it's kind of item potent so if this directories are not present it will be creating the files are not present it will be creating okay if it's already present it will just silently ignore oh those are already present i don't have to do anything so it will kind of ignore okay so okay then finally we are starting the kafka server super simple stuff so this is the shell script which is present under the bin directory and we are saying that hey command go and read the property files from this location okay so this is where the kraft server dot server dot properties file is present we are asking this um, command to or the script to use this file okay so that's what we are saying nothing else now let's come back to our terminal so this is the docker image i want us to use actually wins docker this is my repository and uh, kafka this is the image i have created okay so um i want you to run docker run this command okay docker run wins docker kafka if you hit enter it creates some cluster id formats the storage and it started super quick right so okay so docker is what we are going to use uh, to spin up the kafka server and we will be playing with this for our learning so if you want to stop just say uh, press control c and you should be good hey guys in this lecture let's talk about this compose directory okay so if you expand this here we can see these files so this is the docker compose yaml so this is what we would be using throughout this course okay so wins docker kafka this is the image then i am giving the name for our docker container it's called kafka i am giving this name so that we can use this name to access our docker container easily okay that's why otherwise we do, it will be generating some random name you know that so that's difficult so i am giving some name for our docker container also kafka as a server it will be listening on port 9092 it can be modified actually um, we'll talk about that later so the kafka server the default this th this image um, this container will be listening on port 9092 i am mapping that with the host port 9092 if you want to change it you can always change it here and i am giving the kafka cluster id as this and some random id again as i said if you want to change it feel uh, feel free to change it but for our learning purposes it doesn't really matter okay then we have volumes okay before we talk about this uh, we have said that hey kafka server go and read this property file when you start that's what we have said right okay so this property file is present inside the docker container and if you want to tweak for some reason we cannot i don't want us to rebuild the new image every time so instead i am keeping one server dot properties this is the default value i am going to explain each and everything okay in this course later but i cannot explain this now because in order to explain each and everything right we have to talk about lots and lots of theory i am afraid that it will be super boring to talk about all these properties okay so let's keep this as it is for now okay let's talk about the the basic important stuff like creating topic producing message consuming messages first then let's come back to this later okay okay so this is a default um, server dot properties let, let it be like this and kafka is a stateful application okay as i keep saying it's a stateful application it's like database so it will be creating lots and lots of directories and the, whatever the message we are producing right so kafka has to store them in some location right so by default kafka uses this property and this is the default value actually so this is where it keeps everything if you want to change the path you can change it okay but it will be storing everything inside the docker container because we are running docker container okay so basically this is what i am doing this as a volume mapping so whatever the kafka uh, docker container is going to store i want to keep it in my host path in the current directory in the it will be creating a data directory and it will keep everything there okay so that we can see another property another volume mapping i am doing is there is a server dot properties under props 
props server dot properties i am mapping that with container path kafka config care after server dot properties so that we can update this property files so as and when you start the docker container it will read these properties okay now let's come back to the terminal um, go to the path where the docker compose file is present if i do the ls now i am seeing docker compose file and we have the props directory and i do not have the data directory it will be created automatically so i do not have to worry about it okay so if i say docker compose up so it will be starting the kafka container so if i scroll up it has used whatever i had given okay and it has formatted the storage and it has started the kafka um, server okay so if i go back the data directory is created and if you see it has created few checkpoint files etc ideally we will not be touching this directly at all okay we don't have to do anything okay so but if you see the metadata properties right so whatever the cluster id we have provided that's what it's stored actually okay so this is what the format storage does in the beginning okay so okay so now let's go back to the terminal okay let me stop okay uh, let me do the docker compose down so it will not be removing the data directory you know that if i do the docker compose up one more time now actually if you had noticed um, let me scroll up slowly okay so if you had noticed this is the second time i did this so we are still using the same kafka cluster id and it says that oh it's already formatted so it started the kafka okay so mm, that's it and the data directory everything will still be same okay so okay so that's it so if you can uh, make this work if the docker compose everything works as expected as i am showing here then that's it this is what it's expected as part of this section okay nothing else hey guys in this section we are going to talk about kafka fundamentals we will be mostly playing with the command line interface to familiarize ourselves with the Kafka. Let's have some discussion around Kafka first before we play with the CLI. We had said earlier that Kafka is an event streaming platform, capturing any events as and when it occurs, storing those events safely in some place so that it, they can be delivered when some applications ask for it later are delivering these events for real-time processing. By processing, I mean um, reacting to those events. Then next question would be, what is an event? Event could be anything that happened in our business domain. For example, Sam liked a tweet, that could be an event. Sam placed an order, that could be an event. User clicked on a link, that could be an event. So event could be literally anything. People also use these terminologies like records or messages to refer to these events so they are all basically same okay so an event occurred if i give that event to kafka how does it store or where does it store actually this question is is, is very difficult to answer we are going to discuss in a super high level but eventually we will learn how things are working inside kafka okay so uh, for now Kafka has something called topic. It's a way of collecting, organizing data in a cluster. You can visualize this like a table in a database. We can have hundreds of thousands of topics in a cluster. Of course, you need to have enough server, but that's a different story. We will come to that later. Uh, for example, these could be topics for our application like uh, user clicks, taxi location, order events, as and when user places an order, we might want to track everything and place those events inside this topic. Also, it is not like we have to have this minus sign in the topic name. It is not like that. There is no such requirement. And the topic name can include um, uppercase, lowercase letters, numbers, dot, underscore, minus sign, etc. Okay. So you can follow any 
um, pattern you like actually but following having some kind of consistency that's good okay so anything which works for your organization so you can follow in a high level let's assume that this is our kafka server and we have a topic created it is called order event so this is one microservice could be order service as and when someone places an order we might want to place that event inside this topic and there could be another application could be inventory service it could be a payment service so these might be interested in these um, order events so when they ask for it the kafka will deliver those events to this application okay great so what will happen this kafka server is crashed or down for a reason so what will happen to our application so our application will also be down right we will not be running one single kafka instance in real life we will be running multiple kafka uh, servers together we call these brokers kafka brokers okay so each and every instance and the whole setup we call this kafka cluster okay so the way in which it works is that they are like a family they all talk to each other and they all know about each other in the cluster so there will be a manager among them so this manager will assign some responsibilities to these brokers so we call this manager a controller okay so the same question what if the controller dies so there will be another controller selected um, among them okay so the controller as i said it assigns some responsibilities to these brokers so let's go back to the same order event topic the same scenario so when we want to create a, um, a topic we want to create a topic called order event so the controller will say hey broker do you want to own the order event topic when someone puts that event can you keep it safe in your machine so it will be kind of assign that responsibility to one of the nodes in the cluster okay so this node will kind of accept that and happily it will start storing that um, messages so as and when somebody places that event it will be storing everything inside um, in this machine okay in in the disk okay so then again same old question so what will happen if this machine dies so the controller will also identify some other some couple of nodes to be the backup so i am keeping things in a super high level so these are like a configuration we will be talking about that later but so in a super high level okay so the this controller will also identify some other brokers to be the backup for this um, machine this instance so so it will also tell this broker saying that as and when you write the data in your hard disk can you also give it to these guys so they can also have the backup so this broker will also give it to these guys okay the data will be replicated to other instances as well so when this node dies so one of them will be kind of become the primary so this application can still deliver the data or they put that event inside the topic and the consumer can still get the data from the topic also it is not like one broker will have only one topic it is not like that so a single broker can manage multiple topics for example this could be the primary node for order events this could be the backup and this could be the primary node for taxi location events this could be the backup basically the data is distributed among all these brokers in the cluster so our application payment payment service sorry address service can can keep on producing the events and the payment service can keep on consuming the events even if one of the node dies or multiple node die for some reason so there will be always some kind of a backup in the cluster so we should be able to safely produce and consume events no worries i am going to demo this later that time you will understand this better okay so i am currently i am keeping things in a very very high level so with that understanding i would like to introduce few kafka terminologies so each and every instance we simply call developers we simply call them servers actually these are like kafka servers okay however 
Kafka has some terminology is called broker, controller, etc. So these are all some kind of a role we assign to this instance or this server. So a Kafka server can act like a broker or can it can act like a controller or it can act like both, both um, broker plus controller. So what is broker and what is controller? As I had said, uh, the controller will be kind of a leader or manager, so which will be responsible for managing the cluster and the cluster metadata, cluster healthiness, uh, this kind of stuff. Okay, the broker which is responsible for managing the topic data interacting with the client. So this is a client, right? For, so interacting with the clients and all, it's a, the broker's responsibility. So the controller is responsible for managing the cluster. Okay, so in a relatively simple uh, small cluster, a broker can, a same server can act like a both broker plus controller actually. But in a large cluster, when you have like thousands of nodes, it will be too much for one server to act like a both controller and broker. So in this case, um, in those cases, uh, what will happen is we can assign a specific role. Basically, hey, you will be a, you can you can be a controller, you can be a broker, something like this. We can assign specific roles actually. Okay. Also, I had used as a some term like uh, this is this would be the primary this would be the backup something like this but in the kafka world we use a leader follower terminology basically this node will be the leader for other events and these nodes will be the follower for other events similarly this node could also be the leader for taxi location and this could be the follower for taxi location topic okay so the leader follower it's it's it depends on the topic Okay, so this is the leader for other event. This is the leader for taxi location and topic, something like that, okay? If I run a Kafka cluster like this with the thousands or hundreds of machines, how can I talk to a specific broker? Because let's imagine that, let's consider a stateless application. Let's imagine that we have hundreds of order service. It's a stateless application. So we will be having a load balancer here. So the request will come to the load balancer and the load balancer will route the request to one of the order service instance and it will get processed, will return the result, right? So this is great for stateless application but here it's a stateful application so we have thousands of servers this node does not have data this node does not have data so only this particular node seems to have the order events topic data so my application how can it correctly go and talk to this broker right so how does it work okay if you remember i had told you that these guys are they are like a family they all know each other very well actually okay so even if you have thousands of machines it doesn't really matter as long as if you know one single server ip address and if you can connect to one single server the very next second you will come to know about the entire cluster actually we do not have to worry about building the logic to get the cluster information and managing this and all because it's already handled as part of the Kafka client library which we'll be adding in our application. So the Kafka client library, what it will do is that when it when it, when our application starts, when it connects to the one of the server, okay, so one of the server, that time it will ask for the entire cluster information and that server will provide, then it will know immediately that, oh, for this topic, I have to go to this guy because he is the leader. So it will know immediately whom to contact, okay? So even if you have thousands of servers in your cluster, as long as you know the one single server, okay, any server, okay, if you know how to connect to one server, then that's enough for your application actually okay so we call that bootstrap server okay so you do not have to maintain thousand server ip address details you can just have one server ip address details okay that's good okay again but however what if that one server is down okay so then that, that's a problem right because the very first time you have to make a connection okay so if you cannot make that connection itself then then that's a problem so what we can have is even if you have a thousands of servers in your kafka cluster 
you can identify few servers as a bootstrap server remember that bootstrap server is not a role it's not like a broker or controller it's not a role this is something for you to to make an initial connection actually okay so you identify set up server servers as a bootstrap servers and you keep that information in your application property file somewhere so that when you connect one of when you connect to one of the servers then you will immediately come to know about the entire cluster okay hey guys in this lecture we are going to create our first topic and i do not have the kafka binaries in my machine whatever i have downloaded i have deleted so i am going to create a docker container and i am going to access the docker container to interact with the kafka okay for the cli but if you have downloaded make it available via path you can simply follow along okay so before i start i wanted to show this so now in the server properties the very first property if you see the roles we are assigning broker and the controller for this okay so now you understand what it, it means okay okay so now let's minimize this and let's go to the let's go to our terminal this is where i have my docker compose yaml so i'm going to say docker compose up to start the container so the kafka server started so i'm going to another terminal um, another window i'm going to say docker ps if you remember i had assigned the kafka name for the container okay so i can use this so docker exec okay minus it to access the container in the interactive mode we have to give the kafka the container name and give me the bash shell that's what i'm saying so if i hit enter i am inside the docker container now using this shell i can interact with the kafka binaries okay so this is cool okay so if i say kafka topic so to if i hit tab then it automatically fills kafka topics dot sketch okay so now if i hit enter it gives me some option saying that hey what do you want to do that's what it says okay so whether you want to create delete describe so and we have to provide this option for example bootstrap server it's a required information we have to provide so you are simply invoking the this this command but where is the server running actually okay actually it's running inside the container only but still it wants to know where it's running so that in, it can talk to that server actually okay so okay so this is what we are going to do and we have to give if you want to going to create the topic so what is the topic name so we have to give this kind of information okay so let me clear this screen so kafka topic okay so bootstrap server okay so it's a local host 9092 and the topic we are going to um, I'm going to name this hello world okay and minus minus create that's it okay if I hit enter it will be creating the hello world topic okay similarly if you want to create more topics like hello world one order events so whatever you want to create you can keep on creating topics okay so now we have these some topics okay so sometimes you might want to know or you might want to list all the topics you have in your kafka cluster so what should i do in those cases again we have to use the same invoke the same command we have to simply say kafka topics and uh, just to provide the bootstrap server uh, and say list if you say list then it will be listing all the topics we have in the cluster okay sometimes we might want to know more uh, maybe somebody else would have created this topic and we would like to know more information or we like to get some information about this topic so what should i do uh, for example i would like to get more information about this order events so i can say describe give me some more information about this order events okay it says that this is the topic name this is the id so it kind of maintains some id that's okay the partition all it will be a little bit confusing for now let's talk about this later okay and uh, so again i'm going to talk about this later and what is this one what is this leader one what is this replica one 
okay so if i if we can um, go back to the property files and i'm saying that the node id is one so each and every node we will we are going to assign some id so for the this docker container um, or this server i have assigned i1 as the node id okay so it says that okay so this one that node that is the leader for this topic so in our case we have only one server anyway okay so that the one that id one that is the leader so okay uh, if we have when we have multiple um, containers when we when we create the cluster right probably we can see this better and we will know what isr means etc at that time it will be kind of a little bit very clear actually okay so let's not pay any attention to these details let's come back to the describe later actually okay uh, if I have to create or delete this topic, if you do not like it, if you want to delete, you can simply say delete. Okay. So that's it. Now, if you try to list and uh, the order events, basically gone. It's deleted. Okay. So as you saw, this is very basic, super simple. Just to create, delete, describe, list. This kind of very basic stuff. Okay let's come back to the workspace since we have done the volume mapping we can see certain things actually so the data is basically the kafka directory right okay so if i expand this so these files we have already seen uh, it would be created as part of the kafka storage format we have seen this but if you had noticed there are three directories like hello world zero hello world one zero so what does this zero mean it's like partition we can talk about that later but the whatever the topic we have created right so the corresponding directories um we, they have been created inside um, in, the, in the docker container on the desk okay so as and when an application produce any or um, emit any events when they write the events in the topic so basically all the the event right they will be stored in here okay in the desk actually okay so if these are all direct sorry if these are all topics and what about the cluster metadata is there a topic actually yes cluster metadata it's a topic but it's an internal topic okay so with when these um the kafka servers when they talk among themselves they kind of publish that events and uh, they that's how they communicate the cluster metadata actually okay so that's great okay so we can see the directories in the topic directories here also when we produce messages right kafka stores everything in the binary format it doesn't really care whether you have json or xml in which form you have your data the producer application might want to produce the data in the json format and the consumer application might want to consume the data in the json format the kafka does not really care the serialization deserialization and all it's happening in the producer and the consumer side the kafka as a server it will keep everything in the binary format okay during this course if you ever face any issue saying that this container is not starting for some weird reason it was working fine suddenly it stopped working you are not sure what it is then you probably you might have messed up the data directory okay so this is something like i myself have messed up many times okay so no worries just delete this and start from scratch so no worries hey guys this will be a quick lecture in our workspace, I'm going to create another directory and I'm going to call this 02 Kafka 101, okay? Something like this. So here, I'm going to create a file and whatever the commands we are going, we are playing with, right? Currently, we are going to play with some commands. So whatever we are going to do, I'm going to document everything in a separate file here, actually. Why is it? Because these commands, these are these are all not like Docker commands. Like Docker commands are simple, short, easy to remember. But these these will become eventually kind of a little bit lengthy, and I am thinking that it will be hard for us to difficult for us to remember. So if we can document this, we can always go back and check this later. Actually, so that is why. Okay. So for the for the topic. Uh, sh i'm creating as a shell script actually this is not a shell script ideally i should be creating i can i could create this as a text file but 
this gives this this is basically a little bit colorful and it gives me an option to comment this so that is why so we we discussed the create describe list delete and all right so i'm going to document everything going forward like this in a separate file okay so yeah hey guys in this lecture we are going to look at another command or another tool cli tool um, to produce messages into our kafka topic for that i'm going to create another file um, i'm going to call this 02 producer dot sh okay so i'm going to simply copy this guy and i'm going to paste it here and the that command is console producer dot sh okay so kafka console producer and you will be giving the bootstrap server and which topic um we are going to into which topic we are going to produce the messages okay so that's what it is okay to produce messages okay so that's what we are going to do now copy this command now let's go to our terminal okay so i'm inside this um, docker container so i'm going to paste this command Kafka console producer, bootstrap server, topic hello world, ensure that the topic is present. Okay. So if I hit enter, now it gives me this, um, this symbol. Okay. So it basically, um, we, if you see this, then we can produce the messages actually. Okay. So you can say hi, hello, it doesn't really matter. You can type whatever you want. So basically you have produced these uh, many messages or events okay as i said earlier kafka does not really care how what kind of message format um, you produce so the console producer right so whatever the message you type it will take everything and it will convert to byte array and it will be that's how it will be storing inside that um, kafka if you go back to this we can safely assume that whatever the data we have produced everything is stored inside but the rr will be in the binary format okay so you cannot actually see mm. so now this is a console produced the real life you will be having some kind of a java application to produce messages into this topic okay similarly we need another application to consume these messages okay so for that we have another tool another another command called kafka console consumer so let's bring that and see if you can see all these messages okay let's come back to the workspace here i'm going to create another file to create the um, console consumer so consumer.sh so i'm going to simply copy this guy and i'm going to paste it here to consume messages and it's console consumer okay so everything is same i'm going to paste um, sorry i'm going to copy this and i'm going back to the our docker container okay let me come out of this and if i paste this console consumer bootstrap server topic hello world if i hit enter and uh, even if i wait for one hour one month i will not be getting any messages okay so this is the default behavior actually so when you start a consumer okay and when you ask for the messages from a particular topic like this kafka will not give the messages now why it's supposed to give right actually it's supposed to give but there is one small um, option we have to provide okay so this is a default behavior so it will always give new messages actually okay so when you hit enter if there are new messages being produced into this topic then the console consumer will get those messages the existing messages um, it, it will not get it so for that there is an option called from beginning okay so i would like to get all the messages from beginning something like this so we have to explicitly um, say this okay so so this is what um, we have to give these options okay so 
let me copy this guy now let's go back let me come kill this okay so let me paste this now control consumer bootstrap server from beginning that's what i'm giving if i hit enter now this will be try consuming all the messages from the beginning hi hello i entered one new line okay so everything it kind of gives me all the messages actually okay so now if you can call this and again if you can do this so it will be giving you all the messages from the beginning okay hey guys in this lecture i'm going to bring both producer and consumer side by side and we can see how it works okay so for that um let me copy this console consumer this the first command okay consuming from that topic i'm going to minimize this so this part it's going to be the consumer um, and i am not using from beginning so if i hit enter you know what will happen it will wait for new messages to come actually okay so now here i'm going to start the producer here so let me change the consumer to producer okay so now if i hit enter now i it will allow me to produce messages now you can say one if i hit enter okay now you can see the one appear here in the consumer side this is cool right okay if i say two three four so you get all the messages but if you notice um, there is some lag right so for example if i'm going to type fast if you see there is some lag when i typed as this das etc there was nothing but suddenly it delivered all these messages together okay it's eventually all the messages come here but it, it's not very immediate as soon as if i type d i'm not getting this there is some lag if you notice okay but eventually it we get all the data okay so if you find this a little bit weird actually okay so this is the default behavior of this console producer actually so any producer this is the default behavior we can assume like this so by default um as and when you type something or as and when you enter immediately the producer will not go and write uh, into the kafka topic okay instead in order for in order to increase the throughput etc it will be collecting messages in batches then only it will go and write inside the it will give it to the kafka um, for to write actually okay so this is more of a producer behavior okay it's not like the consumer is slow it's not like the kafka is slow this is more of the producer behavior okay to increase in order to increase the throughput it kind of collects the messages and it gives them in batches actually okay so this is why you see some kind of a lag here so let me press ctrl c let me clear this and uh, there is a property called a timeout okay by default the timeout is one second so wait for one second get all the messages and deliver though all those messages together something like this that's how it behaves so if i change that to let's say 50 millisecond or 100 millisecond if you change it then you can see that it will be kind of a little bit fast okay as soon as i type one now if you see you get that immediately you notice right okay if i say two if you see it's, it's fast okay it's kind of fast that's it okay now it's not batch anymore okay it's kind of fast even it's kind of batch the 50 millisecond but that's what i'm trying to say here okay so this is how the console um the producer works actually okay so now we are able to see side by side as and when you produce messages you can immediately see that the messages are being consumed here Hey guys, in this quick lecture, I would like to introduce a couple of properties at the producer side. So this is our producer application and this is our consumer application. This could be microservices in our architecture and this is Kafka server. This small box represents the, the actual Kafka client library which we will be adding in our application. Okay, so we had noticed in our demo that whenever I try to 
um, uh, produce messages using the console producer we noticed some lag in the message delivery at the consumer side right okay so that's mainly it's happening what why it's happening is mainly because the client library so using using this we will be trying to produce the messages so even though you keep on sending uh, you, you can keep on giving the messages to this library it will not go and immediately deliver everything to the kafka server this is mainly because it's basically a network call right for small small messages if it keeps on making a network call it will kind of affect the performance in our case everything is local host actually but in the real life your application might be running in one data center and the kafka server could be running in another data center who knows okay in a different availability zone etc so what this library what it does is that it will collect the messages then it will be trying to deliver the messages as a batches um, to the kafka server so this is what it does okay so there are two important properties for that the first property is linger.ms the value is in milliseconds so the console producer has it configured uh, as like a thousand so it, it was trying to collect all the messages like for a second okay then whatever the message it has received in that second it could be 5 10 100 does not really matter so it will be trying to deliver everything um, as batch to the kafka server so we immediately got this at the consumer side okay so there is also another property called batch dot size this is in bytes actually okay so basically how it works is that either or okay one of these conditions should be met okay at least one of these conditions should be met okay so either one second should have passed or you should have um, your message size uh, should be like this okay so it, the default value is 16 kb actually okay so either one second should have passed or your message size in total uh, if it reaches like 16 kb or so then it will be trying to deliver the message actually okay so these are like simple properties at the producer side we can always configure to whatever we want okay so but the console producer has it configured 1000 millisecond and 16 kb so that's why we were seeing that delay okay for the immediate delivery you can set this value as zero if you want in this quick lecture let's talk about the consumer we had said that the producer will keep on collecting the messages in batches and it will try to deliver right so what about the consumer how does it work is it push or it's a pull how does it work okay so as and when we write messages into the kafka topic kafka will not try to deliver the message into the consumer it will not pushing the messages to the consumer okay if the consumer has to pull messages from kafka topic okay so it's pull based not push okay so you might ask why because this consumer is there it gets the messages why kafka cannot push the messages into this consumer okay so the 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 question is basically it since it's because it's up and running and our messages is basically super simple maybe we might think like that but in the real life right um, the messages could be um, large also we can produce millions of messages into kafka topic easily kafka is it has low latency high throughput we can easily produce millions of mess thousands of messages in in a second actually okay but what about the consumer how do we know that it can process all the messages at the same rate um, um the producer can produce you are getting right so the pro so the consumer has to always request for messages from kafka okay so kafka itself it will not go and dump all the messages uh, to the consumer so Kaf consumer has to request for messages so can you give me some messages it will process okay i'm done can you give me some more messages something like this so it, it will be always requesting for messages again we can always adjust um, the configuration to how many messages we want to request we can adjust that value but kafka it will give whatever this guy is requesting 
okay so even in our reactive programming right we if you remember the subscriber um, in the sub publisher subscriber model the subscriber using the subscription object it has to request um, n number of messages only then the producer will give those messages so basically the same concept here whenever the consumer asks kafka to give the messages right we call that polling actually so there is a property called the maximum poll records so using this property you can fine tune how many messages you want um, to be delivered as part of a single poll request so the default value is 500 again we can always change this okay so uh, this is how we can adjust the number of messages being delivered to the kafka um, consumer okay let's quickly talk about how the serialization deserialization works in this flow when you give a message to the producer library it will serialize that into byte array when the consumer asks for messages, Kafka will give byte array to the consumer. So it is producer responsibility to convert the message to byte array and it is the consumer's responsibility to convert that byte array back to the original form. Okay, so the actual message in your producer application could be a string, number, JSON, Java objects. It doesn't really matter. Okay, everything will be stored in the binary format, the Kafka side. Okay, so how will it serialize? How does it know how to serialize? So it will ask for, um, there are certain um, the properties we have to use actually. So we have to provide how to serialize that information. We have to give that information to this application. I mean, this library. Similarly, we have to provide the information on um, how to deserialize actually. So we have to give the serializer class, deserializer class. Okay, so we will be talking about that later. Okay, so Kafka comes with some basic serializer and deserializer uh, like for converting string to byte array, integer to byte array, this kind of stuff. Okay, some basic stuff. But it's an interface, so it also gives us the flexibility to create our own um, serializer and deserializer. Okay, but no worries. When we use Spring, Spring will do all the magic for us. Okay. If Kafka is going to store the data on the disk, and whenever we ask for data later, if Kafka can provide the data how long will it keep the data will it keep it forever actually there is a log retention policy if we do not do the server dot properties um, the docker file mapping and if you can get directly check the docker container server dot properties you can see this actually so these are the properties so by default it's trying to keep the data for like 168 hours which is seven days okay you can also control based on the size the bytes so either you can go by this or you can go by this so that's what they say okay so when one of these condition is met so that it will kind of delete the data okay so if you if you have been running your uh, kafka server for like uh, 10 days the, the um, it will keep the data for the last seven days okay so something like that okay and uh, there is an interval so it will how often to check so using this interval it will check oh do i have this many bytes so then i should delete something like this okay Hey guys, let's take a look at the concept called offset in Kafka topics. There is also something called partition which is closely related to this offset but I would be covering that in another few lectures. So let's go one by one. Kafka topic is basically an append only immutable structure that is as and when the messages are sent to Kafka Kafka will store the messages in the order it receives. The offset is a number which starts at 0 and the messages are given the offset based on the order in which Kafka receives. So we can visualize this like an array like data structure okay just for visualizing purpose okay. So when the consumer asks for messages Kafka will give the messages based on the offset information. 
so it's guaranteed that the consumers will get the messages or, or all the events in the order it occurred so the, the offset right it will keep on increasing actually so let's see a quick demo let's come to our workspace here i'm going to create a new file called 04 print offset.sh okay something like this so here i'm going to take uh, this kafka console consumer and i'm going to paste it here slightly modify here so um, i'm going to use this so slash which kind of indicates that um, the command still continues in the next line okay otherwise it will be lengthy so that's why so i'm going to do this way um, okay the option to print the offset okay as a consumer if you want to see the offset right so there is a property called property print dot offset equals true okay so this is the um, this if you give like this then we can see the offset information as well once done i'm going to delete this topic actually i'm going to start from scratch actually okay so I still have my um, the Kafka server up and running. I still have the two windows. So I'm going to delete this and I'm going to create this from scratch. Okay, so let me clear this. Now let's um, start the consumer actually. Okay, so for this, I'm going to take this print offset, this stuff. Okay, so okay, here I'm pasting this guy. We don't have to give the from beginning because the producer has not yet started as you see um, let's take the producer as well okay so now let me minimize this okay so this is the producer right okay so let's hit enter okay so now if as and when i type something we can see see the hello um, hi hello we can see all those things now you, you also get the offset information actually okay so i can keep on type something now we can see that the messages are getting delivered in batches we know this but if you see the offset information we can also see it keeps on increasing actually okay so basically the based on the order in which it receives the messages um it assigns that offset okay messages they also contain the timestamp by default the system will add the timestamp so in order to see the timestamp we can also modify um, we can also add another property so property print dot time stamp equals true something like this okay so i'm going to copy this guy okay so let me go back to the terminal so what i'm going to do is that um, I'm going to probably I'll kill the producer I'll stop the producer and I'm going to paste this here but I cannot see as you know uh, because it, I have to give the from beginning now because all the messages have um, they have been have been already produced so if I say from beginning now it will be getting all the messages okay? if you see the same messages they also get everything okay but now you can also see that time actually okay so we can also see if you want to see the time you can also add this property like this of course this is the unique time format we can always convert that back to human readable readable format hey guys in this lecture i would like to show you something okay so for that we are going to have another demo of course so i'm going to start from scratch as usual so i'm going to delete the, mm, the topic okay so let me delete this topic the hello world topic is deleted and i'm going to create this one more time okay and this is going to be a producer as usual and here i'm going to split this horizontally and we are going to have one more um, consumer here so basically we are going to have two consumers here okay okay so let me go back here uh, there is our consumer okay so this is our consumer right so let me copy this guy and uh, let's paste it here so the consumer 
has started okay so we have two different consumers um, consuming from this hello world topic okay so now let's start the producer okay so let me copy this and hit enter okay so the now I, I am I should be able to produce messages okay so now I want you to consider this scenario that is there is a producer the producer is super fast in producing the messages okay however the consumer cannot keep up with the the speed in which the producer is producing the message okay the consumer takes some time let's assume so okay the producer producing speed is like one message per uh, per millisecond so thousand messages per second but the consumer speed is one message per second so in this case it will be super slow so you need multiple consumers to process all the messages okay because of this reason you have started two different consumer okay that makes sense now but if I try to produce messages if you see whatever you try to produce both consumers are getting the same message okay so if i try to produce messages actually all the messages are getting delivered but at both consumers side okay so this could be correct in some cases and this might not be correct in some cases okay so it depends on our expectation actually okay sometimes as and when the user places an order okay let's imagine that this is an order event as and when the user places an order okay so both inventory my um, inventory service and the payment service both services will be interested in um, consuming those events so in those cases yeah this is correct okay but in some times when you scale out like you you run multiple um, instances of inventory service in that case you do not want the same message or i am even to be delivered right so you want only one of the instance to get this event so that you can process right okay so there is a concept called consumer group okay so that would solve the problem so that is what we are going to discuss next let's discuss uh, consumer groups basically we would like to solve two different problems let's consider this scenario there is an order service and there is an order events topic the service keeps on emitting events into the topic multiple applications uh, could be interested in consuming those events let's take two for now inventory service and the payment service we also have multiple instances of inventory service multiple instances of payment service um, they are running for scalability purposes okay high availability scalability purposes okay so now uh, here as and when somebody uh, someone places an order we want that event to be delivered to both inventory service and the payment service okay but this is super important so here even though multiple instances are running we want only one of these instance we want that instance to receive that um, event okay so remember that whenever we place as an order the event should be delivered to both these services but here we want only one of the instance to receive that event okay not both okay so for example that event is delivered to both this instance and this instance then we will do redundant processing right which we do not want that is a problem okay so this is where the consumer group that comes into picture consumer group simply a logical collection of one or more consumers which will work together as a single consumer okay something like that so even though multiple instances are running here they all make connections to kafka server from Ka from kafka perspective it's one single consumer in a high level okay something like that that is how we have to see okay so in order for that to happen we when we start this consumer what we will do is that there is a property okay so we will tell this um, kafka the in this we will tell these instances that 
hey you belong to this group okay so that is how they will kind of make the connection with the kafka so kafka will understand that oh so there is a group and these guys belong to this group so i have to deliver only one event to one of these instances okay something like that okay again i'm keeping things in a super high level okay so eventually we will understand this uh, much better actually okay so let's quickly see a, a demo first in action then i will demo another problem with this okay let's come back to the workspace here i'm going to create an, another file called consumer group.sh okay so let's keep it like this so i'm going to copy this guy and i'm going to paste it here uh, the offset is okay i do not want timestamp so the group right when you start the consumer you are going to tell uh, which group it belongs to so you have to give some name here actually okay so like the order service payment service so give some name here so that's it super simple stuff right let's come back to the terminal here as usual i'm going to delete the topic start from scratch actually um, delete and create the topic okay so let's start from scratch okay so now uh, we have created the topic now i'm going to start two different um, consumers from different group actually okay so let me minimize this okay so let's imagine that this there is one consumer from payment service okay let's call this ps okay so this consumer belongs to the ps consumer group okay great it started okay and here i am going to start another consumer which belongs to a different group called in, um, inventory service so i yes so let me start this as well okay so two different consumers they belong to a different consumer groups actually right so group names are different here okay so let me start the producer this is the console producer okay so i now as and when i emit an event we can see that the messages are getting delivered immediately okay so we can see that both parties are getting that sorry both consumers or consumer groups are getting the messages now let's see what will happen if we start one more consumer which belongs to probably let's say inventory service okay let's see that as well so maybe i'm going to split this um, horizontally okay so now i am going to um, copy this and paste it here okay i'm going to say um, this is is so two different consumers belongs to the inventory service okay so hit enter so now there are two different consumers right okay so now let's say if i say seven now we can say that the seven is delivered here seven is delivered here but seven is not delivered here this is cool right okay now this is where i'm going to um, show you one problem actually okay so let's deliver some let's keep on send send, um, send me some messages now if you see i type very fast okay very fast but if you notice okay so up to 51 um this message actually the message can be null okay it can be blank so kafka does not really care so that's why even if i enter new line right it, it th those are getting delivered as messages actually okay so anyway the point here is now both consumer groups are getting messages as i expected which is good but only this guy is getting all the messages okay so this consumer seems to be sitting idle actually right it doesn't seem to do anything so what is going on so yes this is a problem which we can solve using partition so let's discuss that next sorry guys before we continue i would like to quickly show you uh, one more thing if you remember when i was producing a value and when we had two different consumers not consumer groups two different console consumers both console consumers were getting the value right so how they were working okay so okay for that i'm going to go back to our uh, the console consumer i'm not going to copy this group name um, let me take up this okay 
the offset all those things okay so let me come back to the terminal let me hit enter here okay so now this is one console consumer and this is one console consumer okay so here we are not saying any group actually okay but if i go to kafka the, the, this side i'm i'm going to enter another command kafka consumer groups okay so minus minus it's the same bootstrap server okay local host colon 9092 okay so if i say list now we can see that it creates two different uh, consumer group actually this is a consumer group command so whenever you start a console consumer right it will create a separate consumer group for that console consumer and it will make this as part of that um, group so since it's like two different consumer groups so they both um, consumers they get the same value actually okay if they are part of the same consumer group definitely one of them would have got the value okay so the message you're getting right so to document this i'm going to copy this guy and i'm going to paste it here okay in the previous demo we saw that when we run multiple instances from a consumer group when we were running multiple instances of inventory service as one single consumer group, only one instance was getting all the messages. The other instance was simply sitting idle. Why is that? Okay, first we have to understand that Kafka is an event streaming platform. Our basic expectation is that applications need to process all these events in the order it occurred. So that is why Kafka store all these messages like append only uh, messages. Okay, so that when consumers asked for it, it can give in the order it had received. Let's consider this scenario for a minute. There is a banking application. So Sam. He deposits $1,000 check. Then he wants some cash, so he wants to withdraw $50 cash. So whatever the action he took, right? So we raised two events. One is a deposit event, the other one is $50 withdraw event. So he did, he did it one by one. So first the deposit event occurred, then the $50 withdraw event occurred okay so now there is a transaction service it's a microservice and we are running multiple instances of the transaction service okay so this guy when it asks for the messages so kafka will give the deposit event okay okay so let's assume that the deposit event will take time to process that event okay so meanwhile what we are saying is that why this is sitting idle so why can we not give the next message to this instance right that's how we were assuming right okay so now let's imagine that we are giving this event to this instance because it's sitting idle okay so what do you think that it will happen so while it's still trying to process the event before it inserts the record saying that so sam he deposited thousand dollars this will receive the withdraw event maybe it could be super fast so it will go on to check the database hey this guy does not have any money so you cannot withdraw so it will kind of immediately reject right so this is a problem so this is why we have to process all the events um the way in which it occurred one by one okay so it kind of makes us feel like so if there is a topic and if there are this many events then there should be only one consumer which has to process all the events one by one so to avoid this kind of problem right in the previous lecture we were talking about the importance of message ordering and we tried to justify why we had to process all these events in the sequence one by one but with this approach we would be facing the scaling issues so how are we going to handle the scaling problem this is where kafka introduces a concept called partition and the key a topic is divided into multiple partitions. When we create a topic, 
we have to mention how many partitions we want since we did not mention anything when we created our topic kafka assumed one partition let's imagine that we are creating our topic with the two partitions okay if you give that option then what kafka will do is that it will be creating a topic uh, with the two partitions like this this is partition 0 and this is partition 1 okay so what is the use of it it's going to help us with the both message ordering and the scaling at the same time the way in which kafka is trying to solve this problem is along with the partition it also depends on the concept called the key so any message can have a key the key can be null the key can be anything okay so the messages can have a key so what kafka does is that uh, we have the java hash code function right you know right so using the java here let's use the java hash code function let's take the let's take some string let's say vinod okay if i try to get the hash code for that string vinod it's guaranteed that we will be always getting the same hash code value back right okay the same concept this is what kafka uses okay but instead of hash code it has its own algorithm okay the utils dot murmur too so this is one simple function in this function what they do is that they pass the key as a parameter and they pass the number of partitions we have so number of partitions okay so if you see um, then what they do is that using the key they find some number utils dot murmur too but it could be a negative so they they make it positive they take the absolute number okay so just for easy understanding let's imagine that um, there is some number okay and what they do is that they get the mod using the number of partitions so because of this since this the a1 it's constant and the number of partitions is also kind of constant it's always in this case you will be always getting the same result back and they use the number as the partition for this key okay so because of this what will happen here is that when this application when it keeps on producing messages okay so any event related to account a1 it's guaranteed to be landing on this partition actually okay so this is this is how kafka solves the the ordering problem even though we have multiple partitions that is there is no way that Kaf the a1 um the credit will land here and the a1 debit will go here okay there is no way that that will happen okay so as long as you use the same key so that that will not happen actually okay so any event related to a1 it's guaranteed that to land on this partition similarly there could be uh, another account different account numbers like a2 a7 a8 a, etc they might go to this partition but a1 a6 okay so, so they all will be going will go to one partition okay so we have we will be having multiple partition and within that partition the order is guaranteed okay based on the key so how are we solving the scalability issue here so since we have multiple partitions and the order is guaranteed within the accounts right so what kafka will do is that it will happily assign the one whole partition to this consumer and this whole partition to this consumer so now we have some parallelism okay so this consumer can happily process all these events one after another and this consumer can happily process all these events one after another okay so because of this approach so the debit will not be processed before this credit event okay because everything is going to be processed in the sequence by this consumer similarly completely different accounts non-related accounts that will be um, all these are like ordered here so this will be processed by a different consumer okay so there will not be any conflict or any kind of the confusion okay so this is how kafka, kafka solves the both scalability issue and the ordering issue there are a couple of things uh, we would have noticed one is the offset it belongs to the partition not to the topic okay so this 
offset 0 it belongs to this partition and this offset 0 is belongs to this partition okay so the, this will keep on increasing so just because the 2 is there uh, doesn't really mean that we have to start from 3 or something it's not like that actually okay so this is how it will be also this is not really a load balance or some, something like that is um, there is a very good chance that one partition might be having more messages compared to another partition that's totally fine actually okay it is not like all the accounts should be evenly distributed be between these two partitions okay so it's it might not happen that's totally fine so if you want equal distribution right so we have to choose the key um, appropriately okay for example date let's imagine that let's take date um, um, let's assume that the date is in the mmddyy format okay that cannot be a good key at all because why i'm saying is that when you pass the date as the key and when you pass the number of partition it will be always returning the same number for the whole day actually if you are going to produce millions of events then it will be returning the same number let's imagine that it's one okay that it returns number one so in this case what do you think that will happen so all the millions of events it will be always landing on the same partition and another partition will be completely empty actually right so we have to use or choose the key a proper key which will kind of return different different values depends on the um depends on the, the the event actually okay so something like that for example if it's going to be a user click event you can probably choose user id as the key okay if it's an account related event maybe account number could be a, a good key something like that okay you can you have to choose your key accordingly now i'm going to tell you one super important thing okay so where is this code so who is calculating this um, partition is this done by the kafka server actually no it's not done by the kafka server it's done by this guy okay so the uh, the apache kafka client li library so that's what it does so when you give the messages and when you tell that each and message every message has a key right so what this will do is that it will using this it will find the partition information for that message for each and every message then when it sends the message to the kafka server it will ask kafka server to put the message in the prop this particular partition a hey, can you put this in this partition can you put that in this particular partition so it will tell like that so this is how um, it's happening okay there is also an option for us to manually override to a partition for example if i want this um, a1 if okay by default a1 will go here let's assume so okay i have the option to manually override to put a1 in this partition if i want as well okay that's what i'm saying if if you think that this um this option could help you to solve any of your problem you can yeah use this let's have a quick demo let's see how to create a topic with uh, two partitions okay so we might have some existing topic so let's uh, copy this and let's go back to the terminal let's delete this actually okay so let me delete this okay so now the creating a topic with the two partitions right is super easy so basically same create now we are going to give the partition information as well so minus minus partitions okay now you can say two three etc okay whatever you want so i want hello world topic with the two partitions okay that's what i'm saying okay so now if i say describe now there are two partitions partitions count is two okay so uh, we have the hello world topic and the partition zero okay so who is the leader the node id one that is a leader okay and the part there is a, another partition called the partition one so who is the leader so that is also the node id one is the leader for that because in our case we have only one single node okay so we'll also talk about all those things later okay so okay so we can see how many partitions are there and who is the leader for the partition etc we can see actually 
okay using the describe command since we have created a topic with the two partitions and we have uh, understood a little bit about the partitions now it's time for me to clarify and rephrase what i had said earlier in the beginning if you remember this is our kafka cluster and we have multiple brokers running and i had told you that this broker will be the leader for one topic and this node would be the follower for that topic something like that right so this is correct if you have a topic with the one partition okay now we understood that a topic can have multiple partitions right okay so what it will do is that what kafka will in in general what it will what will happen in the cluster is that when you create a topic with the two partitions or three partitions right so this node could be a leader for one partition and this node could be a leader for another partition for the same topic okay it is not like one single broker will be the leader for all the partition for the topic okay so it will be leader for um, one partition and another broker could be the leader for another partition if when we create multiple um, kafka brokers and when you form a cluster probably that would be easy for me to demo that but we have to cover a lot more um, few more things actually before we we come to the cluster part okay so let's talk about that later but now i think that it's a little bit clear okay so the topic is made up of partitions okay so the topic is basically a logical collection of partition okay so the topic and the partition is distributed across the 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 cluster so there could be one node could be the leader for the one partition and another node could be the leader for another partition okay and this could be the follower for one partition and this could be the follower for another partition something like that okay in the previous lecture we created a topic with the two partitions in this lecture we are going to have a demo in the demo we are going to have our console producer on the left hand side we will be producing values with the keys and on the right hand side we will be having two consumers which uh, belong to the same consumer group and we are going to see if they are getting the values based on the key okay so for that we have to come up with some lengthy commands first so let's uh, i'm going to work on it first okay so i'm going to copy this guy and I am going to paste it here in the consumer group. So here this is for producer. Producer does not have a group. So let me remove this. Let me remove this as well. Okay. So okay. So here we have to add a couple of properties actually. Okay. So the property basically what it is. Um, so this is how the console producer will be right. So here we will be typing some text. So what we are saying going to say is that I am we are going to add some colon something like this and say that the before colon there is a key and after this colon this is the value okay so this is what i'm going to say here okay so for that there is a property called key dot separator okay the key dot separator is going to be colon okay then parse key we also have to add this parse key is equals to okay so this is what we are seeing here okay let me remove this so this on the consumer side this is still good except that one small thing i would like to print the key as well so print key true okay so that's it now let's go back to our terminal whatever we have created we are going to paste copy paste here okay so please ensure that your topic with the two partition is still there okay if it's not please create once okay so now uh first let me copy the console consumer and put it here and i'm going to i mean you can give any name let's uh, call this inventory service is or whatever you want to give you can give okay so it doesn't really matter and i'm going to do the same here as well so now i have two different um, consumers which is part of this one consumer group okay so now i'm going to copy the console producer and i'm going to paste it here okay so now we can produce the 
uh, messages okay so the i'm going to use number so that it will be easy for us to see okay so first message let's say one a yeah, let's keep it like that now if you see this guy got the message he didn't get the this he, he didn't get the message okay so this is cool so to be wow okay so again this is not really round robin or anything like that okay so okay so 3c something like that let's see who gets wow okay 4d okay because i i did not want you to think that maybe add number everything is going here even number will be going here something like okay people might think like this but actually it's not the case is everything is depends on that the murmur to um that algorithm whatever it returns okay based on that it's desired okay so now if you see one three four always it will come here okay so any the two will always go here okay for example if you say two two if you say two okay so whenever something is happening on two it's it, this is the one which will get that message not this okay similarly if i say three so it's guaranteed to go there actually okay so what about six six is a new number so we will not know it might come here or it might go there who knows okay okay so six comes here okay but if i say put one okay if i send for one so it, it will it's guaranteed to go there okay so this is how you divide the i mean you divide the topic into multiple partitions and when you use the key so the message will be kind of distributed among these partitions based on the key value but within the key the order is guaranteed because this message was produced after i produced a so here the order is guaranteed also if you see the offset zero it, it's it's maintained within that partition okay not among the partitions okay so yeah we are going to continue our demo uh, i'm starting from scratch but you can simply follow along we still have the topic with the two partitions and uh, this is our producer and i am running only one console consumer part of the is group okay so there is this side is not running okay okay so here I, i'm i'm going to see how it's going to behave okay so key one value something key two value something key three some value four some value okay so now if you see uh, this consumer gets all the messages actually since we have only one consumer in that consumer group kafka will assign all the partitions to that consumer so because of that this consumer gets all the messages you might c2 offset 0 okay it will be kind of a little bit confusing it's mainly because it comes from two different partitions okay so that is why okay so meanwhile let's assume that this consumer suddenly maybe because of the auto scaling this consumer came uh, suddenly it started okay became part of the group something like that so let's imagine like this so 5 6 7 okay eight wow nine whoa okay one two okay super interesting so beyond this point right so it, it will be getting all the two what about three three okay four five seriously okay so two and five this guy will be getting and all um, these numbers anything with this keys right so this guy will be getting okay so what kafka will do is that when it sees a new consumer joining in the consumer group it will do something called partition reassignment when we bring java that time we can demo this better actually so now as you saw initially it was getting all the messages as soon as this guy is joined so now kafka kind of divided uh, the partition of actually basically it assigned two different partitions to two different consumer now he this guy is getting messages from one partition and he is getting messages from another partition so beyond this point okay if you say anything for five it always go there actually okay of course okay so similarly if anything for seven this guy will be always getting the message okay something like that okay 
so what will happen suddenly this guy died okay so what what do you think that will happen so again whenever kafka sees some consumer joining some consumer leaving it will do partition assignment okay so it was getting five right so let's do more five okay now it started getting the five it will also get seven etc so because we have only one consumer so it will be getting all the messages okay so again let's bring it back now let's see what happens it should be doing partition assignment okay so now if you see it started getting two and this guy will be getting the seven as usual okay since we have been talking about partition consumer group scaling etc let's quickly um, consider certain scenarios review certain scenarios so that it will help us uh, to clarify certain questions actually okay so this is a producer and uh, this is there is one consumer group and we have only one consumer we have a partition um, sorry we have a topic with the three partitions okay so this is three partition topic okay so when you have only one consumer uh, kafka will assign all the partitions to the consumer okay so now let's imagine that one more consumer joined from the group um, maybe because of auto scaling okay let's assume so so kafka what it will do is that it will do partition reassignment and it will assign one of the partitions to um, the new consumer and uh, the remaining two partitions will be consumed by the other consumer okay so okay now let's imagine that we have one more consumer uh, in the group so kafka will again uh, do partition reassignment it will assign one partition to each consumer so life is good uh, each and every consumer will be consuming one partition so there are no issues so now let's consider one more consumer joining okay so what will happen now okay so in this case the consumer will be sitting idle okay so this is expected because we do not have any partitions to assign to that consumer so that consumer will be sitting idle only okay we cannot assign a single partition to to two different consumer if we are if we can assign and then we will be if we are going to assign right then we will be facing the same original ordering issue okay so because of that we will not be doing so this is how it will be okay so a maximum number of consumers uh, we can have in a consumer group it depends on the part uh, is equal to the number of partitions we have for the topic okay so if if our topic has five partitions then you can have maximum five consumers in the consumer group if you try to create one more consumer as part of the consumer group six or something like that it will be sitting idle let's consider this scenario so we have a three partition topic and we produced a few messages these are like keys okay so this is key one this is key one key two key two key three key three something like that so the key four came here okay so as per the, the murmur two algorithm so this is the partition it found so the key four came here actually okay so this is how the, our original setup is our application so everything is being consumed so everything is working fine okay however you realize later that uh, you made a mistake your application is suddenly you started getting more traffic so three partitions will not be enough you need one more partition okay so you might think like that okay so there is a command actually to change the number of partitions so there is one command if you like if you run this then it will change the number of partitions to four so now you have got one more partition okay so this partition can be assigned to this consumer wow okay this is perfect okay but there is one problem since the number of partitions change since you have more partition now now there is a very good chance that the producer will send the some other items to the new partition okay initially when we were running all these things we had only three partition because of that we had some messages okay now since we suddenly we have new partition four partition right this will be assigned but the messages might to go might go to this new partition so because of that what do you think that it will happen so when the four is here 
it was produced even before this was produced it was here it's it's not yet consumed it's not yet processed but there is a very good chance that this will be processed before this is processed you're getting right so we will be facing this kind of issues so we have to be super careful if we are going to change the number of partitions okay so how to solve this okay there are a few options the first one is disking up front properly okay so of course okay assuming this is where we made a mistake or maybe we didn't um, consider all the scenarios let's move on okay so we can we can accept the message ordering issues for a short period of time not each and every application in the world is mission critical application okay maybe your application could be okay in this in those cases actually so assuming that's true maybe we we can we, we should be fine okay so we don't have any issues we can accept the message, message ordering issues for a short period of time okay assuming this is also will not work for you we have another option that uh, we can stop the producer because only if the producer pro produces messages we are going to have issues so let's stop the producer drain the existing partitions first okay then we can start the producer okay so this way the problem can be solved actually okay so but if you think that no we cannot start the stop the producer we will be having um downtime this kind of issues if you think like this then this is the alternative i guess that we have to create a new topic with the four partitions we have to update the producer application to send the messages to the new topic okay then consumer right they will still be consuming the old partitions old topic once they have once they are all done once they have drained um, the entire topic all the messages now we have to update the consumer to consume the new messages new topic messages okay then we can delete the old topic hey guys in this lecture i am going to show you something that um, there is a command to see how many messages have been produced by the producer and how many messages have been processed by the consumer how many messages are uh, lagging um, this kind of stuff okay so we can see uh, so for that i have deleted the topic and i have recreated the topic with the two partitions once again okay the same hello world topic okay so same stuff console producer parse key everything is still there okay i have started the producer but the consumer i have not it started okay so i have not hit enter so i am going to name the consumer group as cg but i am not going to start it okay so now i am going to pro start producing something 1a 2a 3a 4a something like that okay the key is different that's what super important nothing else for now okay so keep on producing something okay so now we have some messages actually okay so now we have eight messages actually okay now i am going to hit enter now if you wait and see you would know this already that uh, when you start a new consumer group okay that consumer will not consume the existing messages we have already seen this when we start the console consumer okay so this is the default behavior they will always start consuming from the um, new messages actually so this is a default behavior that is when a consumer starts if it ha if if it has never processed any messages before from the topic okay so they will always always they will be getting the um, new messages okay now let's go to another terminal here you might not be able to see this clearly because the font size is small i try to increase the font size what happens is that it kind of messes up the table the result actually probably you i want you to check in your terminal okay so probably you might be able to see that properly okay so the command is kafka consumer groups okay this is the command okay bootstrap server local host 9092 okay then we have to give the group name the, our group name is cg okay now minus minus describe okay if you hit enter you see that 
there is a consumer group called CG and the topic is hollow world there are two partitions okay um, actually we produced eight messages looks like both partition has like four messages okay equally distributed this is okay but it will not be uh, as you know it will not be the case always but okay uh, the lag is zero is basically it shows that the consumer is good he, uh, basically it does not have any messages to process actually that's what it sh shows okay so now since the now the consumer has started right you can simply say one a two a one a something like this you can okay so now it keeps on getting the messages actually okay since i have not given any value it's empty okay now if you go and check the lag is zero and we have six messages okay six messages each in partition okay which is good okay lag is zero okay now let's stop the consumer again let's produce some messages oops oops, oops. okay let's produce some messages okay so now i have produced some messages okay now if i go back and check the command one more time it shows that the log end offset it is seven here log end offset is 11 okay so we have these many messages the lag is one the lag is five that is the consumer has to process one message from this partition five messages from this partition actually so it knows that how many messages it has received already and how many messages it, it's, it has to process so these many messages are lagging so something like that so now if you start the consumer okay if you start the consumer it will exactly start processing from this three four okay so this the three these messages it will start processing now you might think like hey but what is this five sdsd is not supposed to process from three you might ask like this but remember we have two partitions when you have two partitions when it joins so it gets assigned both partitions so it kind of took this from another partition this from this partition something like that okay so now if you go back and check the lag is zero okay so what i'm trying to say here is kafka will manage this information internally that is it will know that there is a group called the cg okay and it has processed these many messages so the servers might crash the server might come up and down all those things when they come up oops, sorry when they come up they will be getting the messages where they left off okay so yeah this is what i wanted to show i like to quickly add this so let's consider this scenario here we have a topic with the three partitions okay and here we have multiple consumer groups this could be inventory service this could be payment service this could be a transaction service it doesn't really matter okay so here we have multiple consumer groups and each and every consumer group can have one or more consumer so here we have more consumer here we have only one consumer it does not really matter okay so the partition assignment will be happening within that consumer group since we here we have only one consumer all the part Partitions will be assigned to this guy here this is a separate consumer group here we have two consumer so two partitions will be assigned to one consumer and one partition will be assigned to uh, another consumer okay within this group so something like that and uh, Kafka will remember their position where um, how many messages um, they are lagging etc it will be tracking this information for each and every consumer group separately okay so now let's imagine that the cg3 it crashed so we have this guy produced more messages but the cg2 it keeps on uh, catching up cg1 is good but cg3 crashed so its lag is increasing 10 actually okay when cg3 this consumer group the consumer comes back up it will give exactly where it left off those 10 messages it will be delivered to this guy okay so it will be tracking each and every consumer group separately okay hey guys 
in this lecture we are going to have a quick demo which will be more or less like the previous one but i wanted to show you something okay here i am still having the same old topic with the two partitions okay i'm starting from scratch and uh, i am going to start the console producer okay and uh, here we are going we are having one consumer from the c um, the cg consumer group okay i am going to start this as well okay so let's produce some messages it does not really matter produce whatever you like to do okay let's do something okay i have five messages okay okay so now i am going to stop the consumer i'm going to clear the screen and i am going to start the consumer one more time oops okay so let me copy this and paste it here under the cg consumer okay i'm going to start this one more time with uh, this option from beginning you remember what it will do right whenever we start the console consumer when you say from beginning we are supposed to get all these messages right all the five messages i'm supposed to get okay if i hit enter now if you wait and see you will not be getting those messages actually why whenever we used to say console consumer from beginning we used to get but why we are not getting this time is mainly because when you when we used to do this before that time we will not be specifying the group name okay so kafka will create some random consumer group for us and it will place our console consumer under that group okay and since that group consumer group is kind of brand new when you say from beginning it will give you all the messages okay for you okay but this cg right it's already was there this console consumer with the cg group was it's already there and we already consumed all those five messages okay so now even though when you say from beginning since kafka knows this consumer group and it already tracks what it has delivered so far what it will do is that hey you have already got all those messages there is no lag so just because if you say from beginning there is nothing for me to give you okay so because of this kafka will not give you all the messages but if there are some new messages that time you will be getting actually see all the new messages you will be getting okay but the existing messages right so those have been already deliver those have been already delivered so you will not be getting those so sometimes there will be a scenarios in a way that you might want to get those messages okay so there is a way for that okay so let's look into that in the next lecture as i had mentioned earlier kafka tracks each and every consumer groups separately sometimes we need the flexibility to reset the offset maybe i might be having some bug in my code so whatever the message i have processed so far it's not correct so i might want to go back and reprocess all the messages one more time something like that so there should be a way to uh, tell this to kafka okay so for that that's what we are going to do so we are going to reset the offset okay so kafka provides some options actually so for example you can say shift by so there is a command i'm going to show that so the, these these are the options in the command we, we can provide that is uh, i want to go back um, go back by five five messages actually give me the last five messages actually some, something like this or i want to move forward i want to skip five messages something like that okay so these are the ways you can specify minus 10 minus 5 whatever you can provide you can provide okay similarly this is positive number minus number you can provide actually similarly you can also give the duration i want to go back by five minutes and whatever the messages you have you have received in the last five minutes give that to me something like that this is iso 8601 standard okay so this is period or duration and uh, this is time five minutes you can also say um 10 hours one year whatever you want you can specify using this standard actually okay so you go back by five minutes similarly you can also say that uh, from january 1st from this hour you can also specify all the, you can provide the entire date time like this 
from that moment i want to see um, get all my messages actually you can say like this or if you want to go to the beginning you can say this or you can also go to the latest you can also specify this okay now i'm back to the workspace here i'm going to create another file actually 06 reset of set dot sh okay okay so here i'm going to copy this and i'm going to use it here actually okay so here we are going to use this command consumer group bootstrap server group is cg okay and in that group we would like to for this topic okay for this topic in our case the topic is hello world okay and what do you want to do so we would like to reset offset okay reset offsets okay so here we got to specify which option so i am going by shift by okay and uh, i'm go i would like to go back by three that's what i'm saying okay so yeah and we also have not produced a lot of messages so minus three okay looks decent to me also remember that when i say shift by right it will kind of go for each and every partition it will update okay so it will go back by three for each and every partition okay so and there are two options one is dry run so this will not update but instead it will tell us where the new offset will be okay if you really want to update then you have to specify that um, you have to tell that execute okay so this is simply a dry run and this is the actual update okay so let's go back to the terminal and see now before we do the uh, dry run or execute I would like to describe first okay so we have already seen the describe command consumer group I'm just describing the CG consumer group okay if I hit enter what it says is that uh, for this partition okay so the current offset is 3 um, so this is what it says so basically there is no lag similarly for this partition the current offset is 4 so there is no lag actually okay in the log end offset current offset both are same so there is no lag lag actually okay so uh, what we are going to do is that we are going to run we are going to do the dry run okay i'm going to run this and it says that the cg group must be inactive okay this is mainly because the consumer is running in my case so i have to stop the consumer okay only then you can do the mm, sorry only then you can do the reset okay so if i go back oops sorry i have lost the command okay let me copy this and paste it here okay so if i run this it's a dry run what it will say is that so it will be updating the offset like this that is uh, here when it go when you say go back by three here the new offset will become zero here okay the current offset is three now the new offset will become um, zero and for this partition the new offset will become one that's what it says is that what you want it that's what it asks okay because we are, we are shifting the offset actually okay now if you know for sure that that's exactly what you want then you can do the execute okay so now it has updated okay let me clear the screen because it's super difficult to read so now let's go back and describe one more time okay so now if you try to describe it says that this is the new current offset because of this you started having some lag because we have messages up to this offset since your current offset is 0 and 1 here so it became uh, you have we have three lag here in the, from this partition and we have three lag this from this partition okay so now if i go back and uh, start my uh, consumer group okay i'm not saying from beginning etc if i if i hit enter now it should be giving us those uh, six messages actually okay so six messages i have got those back okay so now if i try try to describe oops sorry guys it doesn't remember my last command i am entering okay so if i do this one more time now the lag is zero now let's let's do the execute by minus three shift by minus three one more time okay so let's do this okay 
you have to go back and stop this sorry about that okay so let's do this okay now it has updated right now you think that uh, now we think that oh I, I made a mistake it's not minus three it's supposed to be minus one okay that's what you are thinking okay so okay what we, ha we can do is that we can use the same shift by but you instead of minus three you are you can say that go by plus two okay shift by plus two that is this is what i'm saying now basically minus three that's what we said so we started having a three lag but we think that uh, it was some 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 something wrong we made a mistake it's not three now you can go shift by plus two so that you will be having one lag actually okay so it updated the offset now if you go back and describe if you go back and describe one more time so this will say that you have one lag now okay i have updated uh, this file with the other options actually so that you can simply refer to um, this okay you can play with this actually yourself so simply you have to give which option you want to go by to update the offset okay so you can give some date some time etc in this lecture let me quickly show you uh, some of the attributes we can have in a message the message can have a key we saw that it is optional null can be a key as well when the key is null some document might say that um, Kafka will do round robin so it will one message will go to partition 0 the other message will go to partition 1 something like that um, that's kind of true actually but that got changed recently so it's round robin but not it will not happen for each and every message that is it will send it will send on a message to one partition and it will stick to that partition for some time so whatever the message you produce everything will go to that partition for some time then it will switch to the other partition so they did this for um, for some reason um, for the performance reason some time ago okay and the value this is the the actual event the message the, the, which you wanted to um, transfer to the other services something like that okay uh, then the timestamp we printed that we saw that we can also set the time um, manually okay if you want programmatically okay so when you produce the message if you do not specify anything the Kafka producer will itself will set the time then you know that message will belong to some partition in a topic and the offset is its position within the partition message can have headers as well like as we have uh, the http headers so we can send some additional metadata for example the tracing id for the uh, dis uh, distributed tracing okay so we can send some additional information in the headers probably when we uh, bring java um, in the, in this course right the next uh, couple of sections that time we can see all those things okay then the compression type we can also specify that the default is none there is no compression compression is cpu intensive operation usually compression is good if your message pay payload is relatively large so that um, it will take less size when you compress and easy to transfer it will also take less space when we store on disk kafka will store the message on disk right in the brokers so it will take less space if you compress so gzip snappy these are like various compression algorithms actually hey guys let's quickly review whatever we have discussed so far in this section kafka is an event streaming platform event is anything that happened in our business domain kafka has several um, features like low latency high throughput horizontally scalable the data is distributed among multiple brokers so it's always available for us okay and a topic is a way of organizing collecting and distributing the events um, in kafka using kafka topic can be divided into multiple partitions and the offset is the position of an event within that partition so 
normally we do not run one single kafka server we will be running a group of kafka servers which will be forming a kafka cluster when you run a multiple kafka instances together and one of them will be elected as controller so this election and all they do among themselves okay so these instances they will be assigned some specific roles so one will be a controller the other will be a broker so the broker will be doing will be handling the client interaction and the controller will be responsible for managing the cluster metadata okay so when the topic is divided into multiple partitions so one node or broker will be the leader for one partition the other broker will be the leader for other partition and uh, one node will be the follower for this partition this node could be the follower for this partition so when the node dies the other node will be elected as a leader so, so this kind of stuff okay so when we actually um, create the kafka cluster using docker containers probably we can see this um, much much better but in a high level the theory wise we have already discussed this okay so if kafka is going to store the data on the disk so how long will it keep will it keep it forever we have discussed this there is something called a log retention policy using these properties we can control how long we can keep the data of course we cannot keep the data forever actually so there is a finite amount of disk space you might be having okay so you might want to adjust these um, values and even though we can have thousands of servers in our Kafka cluster, you you might want to keep certain server as your bootstrap server. Um, you don't want to list all the thousand servers in your application configuration when you start your application. Okay, so you can have few servers as a bootstrap server. So when your when your application starts, if it can talk to one server, then the very next second it will know about the entire cluster actually. There are a lot of cool things about Kafka. One particular thing uh, which I like is consumer group concept. So when the producer produces messages and multiple um, applications could be interested in consuming the event. So what we will be normally doing is that we will be creating a consumer group and we can run multiple instances within the consumer group for scaling purposes. Basically consumer group which uh, it represents your application. So inventory service could be a consumer group, payment service could be a microservice, there could be a separate consumer group and you can run multiple instances. So Kafka will as and when an event is received Kafka will deliver those events to the inventory service and the payment service as well okay however it will ensure that only one instance is receiving that event okay not all the instances okay as you know Kafka tracks um, how many consumer groups are there for the, um, the topic where they are um, how many messages they have consumed where they are lagging etc okay and you can also of course always reset okay this um, the offset if you want so as soon as kafka delivers an event to a consumer does kafka assume that yes i have delivered the message that's it my job is done actually no once it delivers the message right the consumer has to process and it has to acknowledge back saying that yes i have processed the message only then kafka assumes that it successfully delivered okay however when we use the console consumer right these are like a simple string so basically we couldn't uh, demo the acknowledgement part actually when i bring java okay when we bring java so that time we can see this uh, much better and cleaner okay so let's be patient for but for the time being yes so this is how it works so it delivers the event and it has to acknowledge back okay okay so this will be the message format a key a message can have a key it can be blank it's it's an empty string null etc and the value can be null empty string anything okay so the message can have timestamp you can set it or otherwise um, the producer will set the timestamp and the message will be um, part of a partition and it will have its offset we can set headers again when we bring java the time we can show this and the message can be compressed to save some space on disk and also for a faster transfer um, between um, the producer broker and the consumer etc 
hey guys in this section we are going to talk about reactor kafka so the goal of this section is to set up a project with the reactor kafka then developing a simple very simple producer consumer application to understand how it works there are certain properties which uh, which we could didn't use when we are playing with the console producer and console consumer there are a lot of things hidden for us actually but by developing a simple reactor java kafka application right so we can see this much better now also we did not talk about the acknowledgement concept earlier now we can talk about that as well we can also create a consumer group and we can run multiple instances of our consumer application and see how things are working and the partition assignment rebalancing strategy so how it works when the consumer starts when the consumer dies when you have multiple partitions so how things will be working so here we can see this uh, much better actually okay let's go to spring initializer to set up the project so this is the project we would be using throughout this course so i would like to set up the project with all the dependencies right away so java maven latest spring and uh, the group name can be anything so give whatever the name you like and the artifact is going to be i'm going to call this uh, reactive kafka playground something like that but give whatever the name you like okay so then jar 17 everything looks good to me and the dependencies i'm going to include web flags mainly because i need the jackson dependencies etc then i also need a kafka um the spring kafka we also see you we will also see kafka streams etc so these things will be covered later in a separate course okay so we are talking about spring kafka this dependency okay and lambak maybe we can have it okay so let's see okay so that's it things uh, these are the things we would need for now so interestingly uh, the spring people they do not add the actual reactor kafka library as part of this so this is something like we have to explicitly add okay so yeah so i will be sharing that dependency as well please add it somewhere here okay reactor kafka dependency copy that and paste it here and do the maven reload without fail okay also the reactor kafka library by default the debug will be enabled so it will be writing a lot of log you can see that in the console so for that i would have already shared the log back xml so please create log back xml here okay so whatever the content i have given just paste it here okay and i would like to show this i am in that test class but no worries i am not going to write any test right away uh, i wanted to show this first so if i type reactive right so okay we have this class if i click on it let me go to the package so if this is the spring kafka the package we have a reactive um, package so in that dependency we have a reactive package if you see there are only two classes producer template consumer template super simple okay so if you see there is something called the kafka sender and if you see there is something called the kafka receiver okay so whatever the template methods and all right they basically delegate everything to the kafka receiver similarly they do that for the kafka sender in this template actually if you check it comes from the reactor kafka library okay so my goal is to focus on the kafka library reactor kafka library in the beginning learn the use this to play uh, with the uh, kafka understand the uh, each and every kafka reactor related concept first okay once this is done then in the end we will be bringing spring and we will be developing an application etc okay now let's get started with the developing a simple kafka consumer for that i am going to create a package called section 01 we will be having few packages like section 01 section 02 etc okay and under that i am going to have a, a class called lecture 01 kafka consumer sorry about the name if it's confusing but no worries um, it will be like this for the first few section packages then after that it will be normal okay 
I added a quick note so that when we look at GitHub later, um, probably it will be helpful for you to understand what we are doing as part of this class. Okay. So now I'm going to create a public static void main. So whatever I'm going to do, I'm going to keep everything under this, the public static void main. Okay. So when we bring spring that time we can develop like a normal application. Okay. So these are like quick demos. So this is okay. So, uh, okay. So this is about Kafka consumer, right? So when we use the Kafka cons console consumer, so what did we do? We assumed that there would be some topic in the Kafka server and there will be some producer will be producing some values. So the Kafka console consumer will be providing options like the bootstrap server, um, the from beginning, this kind of options it will provide to and the topic name, this kind of options it will provide to consume the events from the topic, right? Similarly, we have to provide those options. That's it. Super simple actually. Okay. So for that, there is something called Kafka receiver. So this is what we are going to use. If you notice, the Kafka receiver comes from the reactor Kafka library. And if you check, there is also something called Kafka consumer. Uh, Apache Kafka, they, it comes from this library. Okay, so they kind of sound similar, right? Actually, the Kafka receiver is simply a wrapper around Kafka consumer. Okay, so they did not want to give the same name. So they kind of went with the, the reactor Kafka. They went with a similar name. So Kafka receiver. Okay, so the Kafka receiver, this is what we are going to use. If you notice, the Kafka receiver dot create, it's going to accept some options, receiver options. So this is where you will be mentioning uh, the properties, like uh, what is the topic name, uh, how you want, etc. So we will be providing these options. Okay. So we have to create the receiver options first. So let's create a receiver options, receiver options dot create. So we can go with any of these options okay so sometimes we might be having configuration in the map like structure probably let's go with that okay so let's create certain the, the the properties in the map then we will pass it to this guy to create the receiver option okay so for that what i'm going to do is that map off i'm going to use the factory method map off here we are going to create the properties the um, how we want our consumer to work something like this so we are going to provide certain properties here okay so those properties are present under the consumer config it comes from the arg apache kafka library and if you click on this there are lots and lots of properties we have so we can uh, we can yeah we can use this we can override whatever you want to override so there will be some default values if you want to override you can go for this okay so so consumer config, the very first thing, if you remember the bootstrap server, okay. So we had to provide our bootstrap server. So localhost 9092, it's comma separated. So if you have multiple bootstrap server, you can provide, you can keep on, you can keep on going like this. Okay. So the next one, what we want is that, okay. This is something like we did not give when we used the console consumer, but here it's very important. The thing is. Okay, we are going to consume the value, the message, the event, right? Okay, what kind of data type is that? So we have to mention it, okay? Whether it's a string type, it's a number type, it's a some other type, we have to explicitly mention because Kafka has binary. We have already discussed that, everything in the binary format, okay? So here, this will be, it has to deserialize that, right? So what kind of deserializer we have to use? So we have to mention that as well. So consumer config, okay? So, and we also have a key and a value. So we have to provide the deserializer information for both key and value, okay? So key deserializer class config, okay? So we have to provide that. So in our case, for now, everything is going to be string. Definitely we will be creating the, the, the proper order event DTO and all we will be doing this actually something like that we will be doing it later. Okay. So for now everything is going to be string. So if you notice there is something called a string deserializer. It comes from the Apache Kafka. Okay. So this is what we are going to use. Okay. If 
there is also something called the serializer this is this is should be it's supposed to be used at the producer side okay we want the serializer okay so our key will be string our value will also be string so we have to provide both so key deserializer value deserializer so string deserializer dot class okay and the any consumer should be part of a group so we have to provide the group name as well okay the console consumer all kind of behind the scenes it will be creating a random um, consumer group but here there is no such concept so we have to provide the group so okay i'm using group id so that is a group name this is how we have to give okay so i'm going to call this demo group okay so now we have created a very basic simple um, properties for our consumer okay so i'm going to use var i'm going to call this consumer config on a quick note so we have a producer the producer will be producing events to a kafka broker okay then we will have a consumer the consumer will be asking for event we know this okay so now each and everything right they have their own set of properties consumer this will be having like a 20 30 40 properties similarly producer has its own set of properties and the broker it has its own set of properties for example the log retention hours all those things right those are like specific to this actually okay the log retention is not applicable for consumer right so they all have their own set of properties so we will be facing oh what is this for then what is that for so something like this things will be a little bit confusing in the beginning so but remember that these are like different different stuff and they have their own set of properties okay so like consumer config for example there is also something called a producer config there we can see another 20 30 40 properties actually okay so these are like specific to this producer so just i wanted to mention this oops if you ever have a questions like what are all the properties are there how do i know the default value what a particular property in means here what does it mean um, if you have questions like that right go to kafka apache arc documentation it's actually super neat the configuration section so the broker configuration topic producer consumer so many configuration here so if you click on consumer configuration they will have all these the property name what is the default value they will give everything actually so bootstrap server how you have to provide the bootstrap server okay so what the group id means they will give each and everything they will have a very good explanation about each and everything okay so you can always check this here okay we have created our consumer configs and the properties now let's create the receiver options okay so the receiver option is super simple basically just to pass the consumer config and okay okay it's mainly because if you use var right we it does it, okay it, it couldn't infer that type so we have to explicitly say that it's string it's object type okay so then this guy will be happy okay so here you create receiver options like this then here we can have if you also want to provide the your property right we can also provide like this for example the group id configuration consumer config we can also provide like this actually if you want okay but in case things if you have things in the map this is also another way actually okay and when the partition assignment when when it does if you want to um, do some kind of a callback if you want to do we can do so there are some options here actually okay so we can come to that later the super important thing what we are interested in the topic name okay so here it calls this a subscription which topic you are going to subscribe to that's what it says so you can provide a collection of string this is interesting right that is you can listen to you can subscribe to more than one topic if you want okay so this is super interesting so we are going to provide list of topic names but in our case I'm going to give only one topic and uh, 
let me call this order events for now okay so order events this is the topic we are interested um, in to consume so i'm going to call this uh, options simply receiver options okay okay so far we have created just consumer config and the options okay so using this now it has everything all the information for the kafka receiver so we have to simply pass the options okay and that's it our kafka receiver now using this information it should be able to consume the events so there is one method receive that will be giving you the flux of events super simple right that's it okay so this since it's a flux then you can use all the map a flat map do on next do on error whatever you want to do you can do actually okay so um, here we are getting the receiver record receiver record basically that's that the the object okay that whole event object the event object will contain if you see uh, the topic name value where is the key does not have the key oh yeah so the key is also there okay the and the offset partition timestamp so you have a lot of information here actually okay headers so the whole the message format the whole the the record you will be getting it under that whatever you want to pick you can take it okay so i'm going to use a, a logger here so private static final logger from slf4j log logger factory get logger consumer class okay super okay so now here i'm going to simply print log.info i'm going to say i'm going to print both key and value for now let's talk about the headers etc later okay so one thing at a time okay so r dot key r dot value so i am printing these two then since it's a reactive uh, the pipeline right you have to subscribe of course okay so now that's it we are good now you might think that hey you know so this is the so should i kind of block the thread so that this will work it's not like that it's mainly because whatever the uh, the thread uh, the scheduler it uses right it uses the non daemon thread so it does not exit actually so we do not have to block the thread so it will keep on running okay now let's come back to the terminal please ensure that your kafka server is up and running okay so now since we are uh, we are going to play with the order events topic it might not be present so let's create that if it's not there and the partitions i'm not going to be worried about that for now so i'm going to create oops sorry about that i'm going to create okay without uh, one with one partition okay so now the topic is created so since we have the topic now i think we can run this so let me run this application and see okay if you see wow okay so it says that it's a request to request joining it says something like this then successfully joined group found no committed offset order even zero so it knows something about our um, topic partition so it looks like things are working actually okay so now at this point it's waiting for uh, the events to be available for this um, application actually okay which is good now if you scroll up right if you scroll up we can see it's printing all the configuration actually all the value so this is good actually i kind of liked it so there are certain information we over right like bootstrap server and if we give the group id demo group all those, all those information we give but there are tons of properties if you want to modify any of this you can modify all these values for example the maximum poll records we we had discussed right this consumer will ask for hey give me 500 records at a time something like this if you want to change that to 5000 or 10 whatever you want to do it you can always um, update here and it will reflect so basically these are the configuration using which the consumer has started okay good okay so now i am going to uh, let's bring the terminal okay so now i have the terminal here okay and uh, let's start our producer 
so copy the producer command we had for our console producer let's paste it here kafka console producer bootstrap server the topic is order events okay so if you want to give the timeout we can also give the timeout okay if you want okay so now let me see if i can this message hello world message is going to come here or not so there will be slow because as you know wow we got this and the things will be delivered in batches if you remember okay the producer will do that okay so um, wow this is cool guys so now you can type whatever we want so see all the events everything get delivered order id one two three so we can type whatever you want so we get everything okay and we do not give any key here we did not use the parse key options etc because of that the key is passed as null okay which is okay and uh, but we get all the values as you see this is cool right now let's minimize the producer and uh, i'm going to stop this okay stop the consumer okay so now let's use a different consumer group okay like inventory service payment service there could be multiple uh, consumer groups right so i'm going to change this as a different consumer group by just changing the name actually okay so demo group one two three okay so now i'm going to start this and uh, the expectation here is that to see all the the order events okay uh, messages whatever you have produced so far so if i start this application and uh, it's requesting to join and successfully joined which is great but if you wait and watch you will not get the events okay why is that because if you remember we have discussed a few we have discussed this few times already that as part of the console consumer etc okay when there is a topic already and when there are events already if this is a new consumer group first time if they are trying to consume they will be always getting the latest events they will not be getting the old messages okay so now if i bring the the producer back if i say order two three four this will come here okay but the, all the old events it will not see okay so if you remember we had done this using the from beginning the console consumer right so how to do the from beginning here actually okay if you scroll up the property is there this is the property auto offset reset which is latest that is when if this is the first time you are doing so which from where you want to from where you want to consume so give me the new events that's what we are saying so we have to change this value to the um, earliest okay so currently it's latest we have to change this to earliest so that we can do here so consumer config auto offset reset okay so here we have to change that to earliest now if you do this okay if you stop and if you start it will work but here right you have to be patient for like 40 45 seconds okay so there is a reason behind it i'm going to explain we will be facing some small small issues i'll explain everything why it's happening okay so if you wait for 45 seconds that time it will work so why, why is 45 seconds first time we did not wait for 45 seconds but why we, i have to wait for 45 seconds here doesn't make any sense right okay looks like i have to keep talking for 45 seconds now hopefully it comes maybe 45 minutes no oh, 45 seconds okay so now if you see uh, we get all these values hello world whatever we have produced so far we have we are getting everything okay so this is great okay so using earliest we can consume from the beginning okay again if you restart right it will request to join and you have to wait for 45 seconds okay so why is that let's discuss that in the next lecture okay now in this lecture let's discuss why we have to wait for that 45 seconds okay so now if you scroll up and check the log right that will give you the hint actually what's going on so for example we are request 
in the consumer right when you start the application it basically wants to join the um, wants to consume from this topic by using this consumer group okay and it basically it says that request joining group and the group member needs to have a valid member id that's what there is a message okay so there is a rebalance failure something like this so what's going on okay think about this kafka broker it has only one partition for our topic okay that is how we have created we have only one partition if you had created with the two partitions probably you might not be seeing exactly what i am demoing so okay so here we are having uh, only one partition here okay so what happens here is that uh, the one partition has has been already assigned to one member okay so one one consumer group okay so and kafka broker has delivered all those events um, for, from that partition to that consumer basically this consumer it has already delivered so when you restart what happens actually why we have to wait 45 seconds it's mainly because now is again there is another consumer from the group joining something like that because we do not have a valid member id so a random member id will be generated so what will happen here is that hey hold on now you want to join you are joining from this consumer group there was one another consumer already i have already assigned the partition and delivered all those events from the partition to the consumer so now you you want to join i am not really sure if i can assign the partition to you okay because what happened to the existing consumer so kafka broker basically is kind of confused and it will wait okay it will wait because of the there is a property called session timeout that is when a broke uh, sorry when a consumer dies kafka will kind of wait for like a 45 seconds to confirm that it's really dead okay okay so at this point i'm not hearing back from this guy looks like he is dead so probably i will be assign i'll assign the partition to you um, then i'll share all the events um, so that is how it's happening actually okay so this is these are the things it's happening so we have a couple of options if you want to update the session timeout you can update i would say no don't do this instead what we can do is we can have a proper member id okay so consumer config group instance id okay that is the member id so this is the group id within the group i am this instance i am this member that's what you are saying so you can give any number you anything you like actually okay so i am giving uh, one okay so now with this setup with this setup things might work okay so let's rerun but remember this is the first time we are giving okay so from kafka perspective this is also a new consumer so if you wait for 45 seconds this will work beyond this point any other future restart will be super fast actually okay so now we have to wait for 45 seconds okay so now i got all the events right now it joined using the instance id one right now i am going to restart okay look at this see how fast it is this is super fast right i'm restarting see kafka knows that oh you are you are maybe you have restarted oh you are the same member right okay so i'll give everything to you so it will kind of give everything to us whenever we ask for it but if you notice this is an issue right because the same member same consumer group it again and again kafka delivers the same event again and again right so why is that so let's discuss that in the next lecture Hey guys, in this lecture, let's discuss why the Kafka broker delivers the event, the same event again and again to the same consumer group. It doesn't make any sense. Okay, so yes, when we when we were playing with the console consumer, we did not see this behavior actually, um, but here we are seeing this behavior. It's mainly because the consumers ask for events from the consumer group okay the broker tells that oh you're from that group okay take all these events it gives the, the consumer okay and uh, a consumer ask again by after restart 
broker oh we are from the same consumer group okay take those events again and again it gives the same events it's mainly because the consumer right once it received those events it has to process and it has to tell back to the broker saying that i have processed all the events it has to basically acknowledge that it has processed those messages this process the events when we were playing with the console consumer it was happening behind the scenes for us so we did not have to do anything actually we i would have demoed but that's fine actually okay it was happening behind the scene for us actually okay but here we have to ex explicitly acknowledge the message so what is acknowledging the message and why i have to acknowledge so why should i not acknowledge okay so let's discuss that if you remember we had discussed that the kafka broker uh, tracks each and every consumer group se separately okay so that is there is a topic called order events okay there is a topic called order events and it has one partition actually okay it has one partition okay so uh, the log end offset that is number of the messages we have in the that is the last uh, message id something like this so if if it's a 15 basically it means that you have 15 events or 16 events okay if it starts from zero so that's what it means you know this actually okay and there is also something called current offset okay the current offset it's zero actually okay so because of this what happens is that uh, as and when you ask for it oh you have 15 lag take it okay so everything it will try to give all those events again and again so if you want to update your current offset basically you want to move forward you have to acknowledge as and when you process the events so whenever you acknowledge the offset will move to 3 5 10 15 something like this so the current offset has to kind of keep on moving so that Kafka knows that oh you are making progress okay so something like this if you do not acknowledge the message it will it will be always zero something or blank so it will be always trying to give those events again and again to us okay you're getting right so the messages have to be acknowledged okay so when when, when should i acknowledge can i acknowledge first then processing or should i process first then acknowledge for me i would say process the message first then acknowledge why it's because it's it, this is our event right somebody places an order you are an inventory service okay so we have to detect the inventory or maybe we are payment service we have to process payment etc it, it let's imagine that to process an event it will take one minute just to keep things simple okay so you received an event you are processing once the process is complete if you say acknowledge then the offset will be updated to one to something like this so kafka knows that okay this guy has processed i do not have to deliver those event to him something like this it will know okay let's say instead of that let's say while processing the event the machine crashed for some reason maybe out of memory error or somebody restarted the server etc that time you would have not acknowledged the message so because of that the offset will still be zero so that when you restart and you ask for it kafka will give that back to you okay so for me um i would personally like to again depends on the application anyway so i would kind of acknowledge the message once this the processing is complete okay something like that so r dot receiver offset so this is where you are acknowledging so you are going to acknowledge the message okay i am i am i have processed this and i am acknowledging this this is what you are saying okay so let's restart this and if you do this okay now you get all the events back okay so that's mainly because this that was the first time we were doing actually so okay so now we will not be getting this events actually okay okay so you are basically acknowledged since you have acknowledged so you the offset move to 15 so now it will not give those events to you actually okay if you restart again and again you will not be getting those events but if you um, if you come here and if you deliver if you deliver new message order three four five you will be getting that okay let's wait for some time 
and if you restart you will not be getting the 345 as well okay so now let's let's couple of messages let's do this okay you, you get all those events right let me restart this and actually i couldn't show that behavior to you but okay so the, the point here is sometimes you might be seeing that sometimes even you, you you can see that it, it will be coming back uh, even though you think that i have acknowledged but why it's coming back you might think like this this is mainly because there is a commit interval that is even see for a imagine for an extremely high throughput application okay so you process thousand events in one second something like this one one event one millisecond something like this so whenever you acknowledge the consumer cannot make a tcp i mean that is by a tcp connection it cannot keep on telling the broker that yeah, i am acknowledging i am acknowledging it cannot keep on telling this right these are like network calls right so what it does is that it basically collects all those acknowledgement and it commits those yes we have processed these many events something like this so it kind of tells the broker periodically okay so this is why we have the 5000 seconds so sometimes this is why i wanted to tell you that sometimes when you restart quickly uh, even though you say that you have acknowledged you might be seeing the events back but it's happening because of the commit interval okay if you do not like to acknowledge the message um, as we do there is an explicit property which you, you can use it there is something called enable auto commit you can set that to true the default value is false actually okay in the consumer configuration we can set that to true so what um, it will do is that when you if you set that to true along with this property right so as and when the messages are delivered to the consumer periodically the messages will be automatically committed when okay so the commit acknowledgement it could be kind of a little bit confusing um, in the beginning so you can treat both are same for the time being so acknowledgement is basically committing the offset whatever we have consumed asynchronously that's what um, the reactor kafka library does behind the scenes actually we are committing all the messages um, as and when you acknowledge right we are basically committing so when you say enable auto commit this will be happening for you automatically okay so but for me i would personally explicitly want to acknowledge the message because i will know which one i have processed which one i have not processed so i will have more control so that's what i would recommend but these are like options we have hey guys quick lecture to let you know about one thing let's say we have developed one consumer application this application is about processing credit card events let's assume so we asked the kafka broker to deliver some messages so we got some messages we are pro we have processed all of them okay we have charged our end users actually okay now when we were about to send some acknowledgement some network issue so it did not make it to the kafka broker or when we were about to send acknowledgement someone restarted the server so what will happen in this case after restart if i ask a kafka broker to deliver some messages to process will kafka will it re-deliver the exact same messages whatever i had processed earlier actually yes kafka will re-deliver the same messages whatever you were processing earlier because we have not sent the acknowledgement okay so in that case will i not be processing one more time will i not be charging my end users one more time actually yes that's a good question if you are not careful that could happen but no worries uh, for the time being we are still in the early phase okay so let's keep learning and make a note of all these questions eventually things will get clarified i have one uh, uh, after covering the kafka cluster then i'm going to talk about some best practices um, that moment i will be clarifying uh, this kind of questions okay hey guys now uh, let's consider this scenario we have kafka broker and kafka consumer as usual and we have one topic and we have millions of messages let's assume so okay kafka consumer ask broker to deliver some messages 
of course it will not be giving all the million messages it will be delivering things in batches so the broker gives the first four messages just to keep things simple okay one two three four it gave those messages to the consumer the consumer processed one but did not acknowledge one okay processed two did not acknowledge two processed three and did not acknowledge three okay processed four acknowledged only four okay consider this scenario it acknowledged only four okay now the server stopped for some reason okay the server starts again and it asks kafka broker to deliver the messages so now what are the messages you think that kafka broker will deliver is it one two three five six seven all those things actually no kafka broker will be delivering the messages from five six seven all those things it's mainly because the acknowledgement right it's something like a bookmark for kafka broker to track where the consumer is okay so when the consumer says that it has it's acknowledging four right that kind of implicitly means that the consumer has already seen one two three and uh, it's good with all those things okay so what was the last message it acknowledged if it's four then okay it, it will be giving all the five six seven eight etc hey guys in this lecture we are going to see how we can consume from multiple topics so for that i'm going to copy this and paste it one more time so i'm going to change the class name lecture 01 to lecture 02 so it will automatically update to lecture 0 to everywhere so that's it it's good so why would someone want to consume from multiple topic let's imagine that this is an inventory service group okay so this is inventory service group so this application might want to deduct inventory as and when order events okay when that occurs similarly people might be returning their order as well if they do not like it okay so there could be a separate return center something like like this there could be something like that so as and when people return that there, there could be an another topic maybe order returns there could be a separate topic actually so from there the event might come so this service might be interested in consuming those uh, different um, topics actually okay so that's why actually okay it's an option if you want you can use it if you do not lie if you don't have if, in, if you do not need it of course we can ignore it okay so we can provide order events order returns etc like this is a list of all the topics we can give this is obvious thing we can try it another thing which i kind of liked is it also accepts a regular expression pattern so if you want pattern dot compile you can provide the regular expression okay something like this so i would like to consume all the topics which starts with the order something like this we can also give this way okay so let's try this before we try let's also update our, the logging information so along with the key i also going to print the topic now okay so let's keep it like this so that we will know where it's coming from so our topic i'm back to the terminal i'm going to delete the existing topic i'm going to start from scratch it's not really super important we can also keep it uh, as it is so in a way, new consumer group will start uh, but the point here is the earliest is there so this, this kind of stuff nothing else actually okay so i'm creating from scratch actually uh, order event is created here i'm going to create uh, order returns topic okay some topic order returns so that is also created so we have two different topics now so copy the kafka console producer so we are going to produce manually and the topic here is order events okay so here the topic is order oops order returns okay order returns okay something like that so let's start producing okay let me also start this um, application so okay so now 
we can see actually um, let's say here I'm going to say this is even right so let's say order 1 order 2 order 3 so it comes from these order even subjects we can clearly see this okay so similarly return 1 return 2 return 3 so it's able to consume uh, both topic messages right hey guys in this lecture we are going to create a kafka producer okay so for that i am going to create another package called this section 02 okay under that i am going to have one single class called kafka producer the concept wise it's same like this actually okay so i am going to create a simple public static void main method so like kafka receiver here we have a kafka sender actually okay so there is a reactor kafka sender okay sender so if you see it basically a wrapper around kafka producer okay so the kafka sender dot here you have to provide the sender option like receiver option we have sender options okay so now we have to create the sender options the sender options dot create again it will accept a map so probably let's start from there okay as usual i am going to create a map of so i'm going to give certain properties so here the bootstrap server we have to give so again I, here since it's a producer i'm using producer dot config so here we have a list of producer related properties okay so producer config dot bootstrap server okay so here we can provide the list of bootstrap server in this case it's a local host 9092 okay and uh, the consumer has to deserialize producer has to serialize we have discussed this already so the producer config dot key serializer class okay serializer okay so there is something called a string serializer from arg apache kafka common okay this is what we want dot class and the producer config value serializer class okay so again in our case things are going to be string so for now this is the these properties are enough for producer actually so var producer config okay and uh, this has to be key is string key is string value is object so okay now using this we can create the sender option okay so let's create the sender option producer config okay then actually that's it we can we also have some additional options if you want maximum in flight and the, if you want to change the scheduler which scheduler you want to run so if you want to use a lot of i mean there are things actually okay but for now this is fine war options okay so that's it now we can actually pass these options to sender options so now we can start sending but here right what are you going to send basically uh, these are the configuration using this configuration we have created the sender object but we have to send a flux of event actually okay the sender record so whatever you want to send send it as send flux of sender record object okay so this is basically an object holder which will be containing the your event actually okay so we have to create a flux for that so let's work on it let's continue creating our kafka producer okay so now here we have to pass the flux okay so now if you see it's object 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 what is this so this is key this is value and this is something called your result type how do you expect the result type actually okay so uh, this is happening is mainly because because of that type issue so basically uh, we have to provide what kind of type we want so basically we have to simply say this so it's a string and a string okay so 
this will kind of cover the key type and the value type so now if you check it says string string and it's still object the result type so uh, we can we can update this as well no worries okay so i'm going to cover that so now let's creating uh, let's work on creating a flex so since it's a simple demo i'm going to say flex dot uh, interval for now so duration of milli is like maybe every 100 millisecond i'm going to produce a value okay so maybe take like 100 events okay 10 100 events okay so this is what okay we are just we are going to produce 100 values like 100 millisecond actually okay that's what i'm doing again it's a simple stuff uh simple producer okay so here i'm going to say map so the map it's i'm going to say da i okay so now here in the map i'm going to create a sender record okay so the sender record if you see the sender record accepts a producer record it's kind of a little bit confusing what is this and what is what is producer record okay so the producer record is a if you check this the producer record right if you check the producer record basically sender record extends the producer record the producer record it comes from the uh, apache kafka their library and this is the reactor kafka version so they the the sender is the corresponding producer version actually okay so that's how they keep it actually okay so now let's create the producer record first so so new producer record let's create that so it accepts a topic name and the key and the value you can also provide times partition information etc if you want okay let's go with the topic object key value okay so what is the topic name the topic name is order events let's keep it like that and what is the key the key here i'm going to say i'm going to say i is the key okay so the number can be the key okay but this is um, okay so two string okay let's use this as two string because we have said that key string, string type right okay and what is the value the value it going to be again it's going to be a string so i'm going to say order i okay something like this so this is i'm going to basically see the say basically i'm going to keep this as a um order number or something okay so now Okay, this guy throws this mainly because of the diamond operator and if you put this it, it will be happy okay so now we can say map not really sure why it goes here okay let me update this okay so now here we are again having the producer record now using the producer record we can create the sender record okay the sender record dot create the producer record okay if you see this if you check this right it accepts a producer record and the this is the result type correlation metadata object okay so okay now let's pass pr and what is correlation metadata means okay so we have to talk about this that is remember that we are sending the records in batches to kafka right so when you send it we also want to know whether the particular record was sent successfully or not so we need to know the result type of each and every record you are sending so that is what it is about so we can use the key pr key as a, our result type okay if it's confusing probably it will be clear actually in in like in a minute or so okay let's call this flex okay let's put this here now we created a flex now let's pass the flex okay now if you check we are getting the sender result of string okay it's mainly because this is string that is why we are getting a string back okay so do on next so what here is basically happens here because it's a result so now you can actually check you can actually check result dot correlation metadata so whatever the key you have passed here you will be getting it back here so why would someone do that is mainly because now at this point if you are receiving this 
okay i have successfully processed you can put it in your log file or maybe you maybe you log it saying that yes i have successfully sent that record so here you are sending so here it will be keep on sending the records to kafka server here after it's sending the pipeline is basically continuous and it gives you the result what are all the records it has sent successfully okay so this is where you get it actually so this is why you are passing that information there okay I'm going to add the logger. So let me copy this and put it back, put it here. Okay, so I want the Kafka producer class. Okay, this is good. So now here I'm going to keep this as a R, okay? So that doesn't take a lot of space. Okay, so here I'm going to say log.info. Here I'm going to say uh, correlation correlation yeah correlation id okay something like this so you can say r dot correlation metadata okay so and subscribe so at this point if you have this topic created if things are good we should be able to produce i am back to the terminal i have deleted the order events topic i am going to create from scratch okay so i'm starting uh, from scratch now uh, let it let let's try to run this and see whether it's able to produce okay wow okay it's able to produce we are getting the result okay now let's go to our consumer let's see if it's able to consume because it also uses the same order events right okay so let's see wow okay so it's consuming all these events okay oh we are taking only na yeah okay so we are taking only 100 values right it started from zero so it basically stopped that's why it's kind of stopped but if you notice uh we got all the events right sometimes you might see this by reading a blog somewhere so you might be having this kind of a question so i wanted to clarify in this lecture that uh let me create the sender like this var sender like this okay so now sender dot send we can write like this right both are basically same okay so now if you notice the sender has a close method so why we are not using this should i not be closing the sender actually you have this kind of question so it depends on your application okay so you, you have to see this something like a database connection are we kind of opening closing the database connection for each and every request we do not do that right so we always keep that open it because it is it will be managed by the framework when you start the application you open the connection and when you start shut down the application it will be automatically closed okay so this is something similar um if you want to keep on producing values as and when something happens in your application if you want to keep on producing the value you wouldn't want to close this okay or maybe it all depends on the application so maybe in your case you want to send 100 records like this after that then that's it you do not want to send any more records okay so this is more of a one-time thing maybe once per day you want to send 100 records 100 records uh, at midnight as part of your application after that you don't need that sender okay you can close it so something like this so in those cases yeah you can close it so what we can do is uh, do on complete as part of the do on complete right we can it accepts a runnable so we can simply close the center here okay so we can also do this actually this way so this in this way in this way what will happen is the producer will start start producing 100 values and it will stop automatically okay so okay it has started here yeah, values are being consumed which is good okay almost there okay now if you see it exited the zero okay so application is closed but the consumer will still be running okay so okay so this is what i wanted to show okay again you don't have to close this if you if you are going to run your application in the server mode and if you if you are going to keep on emitting events hey guys quick lecture if i can close the sender can i also close the receiver 
actually this is a reactive pipeline right so the subscriber what we are doing here is that we are asking for maximum number of messages long dot max value that is what we are getting actually we are asking the kafka to give us so what it will do is that it will keep on running forever actually so if you say dot take three or something like this so in this case you are actually looking for only three messages maximum so in this case it will give us only three messages and the receiver will automatically stop in that case hey guys in this lecture we are going to have one interesting demo at least that's what i think okay so now i'm going to create a separate package for that section 03 and i'm going to copy the producer here and I'm going to copy the consumer as well and paste it here. Okay. So this is for a separate. I don't want to go and update there actually. Okay. So, okay. So here it's going to be Kafka consumer. Okay. So we are, we have one producer and we have one consumer. Uh, produce and consume million events actually. Okay. So how fast we are able to produce 1 million events okay so now here the producer right um, everything looks good but I cannot emit 1 million using the interval that will not work so flex that range so 1 2 1 oops 1 2 1 million okay so okay this will emit 1 million items uh, here right I'm going to track that time how long it takes to emit 1 million items actually okay so um here i'm going to track the start time okay so system dot current time mill is i'm going to use this so you might ask hey why are you tracking the start time before you create the sender will it not include the creation time as well you might think like this but these are like negligible so we don't have to worry about this okay so it's like approximation so this one okay uh here it is going to accept a runnable oops okay here i'm going to say log.info here i'm going to say total time taken this many milliseconds something like that so here i'm going to say system dot current time millis minus start time so this will tell us how long it took to to emit those 1 million items okay because it has to keep on emitting these items right okay so now things are looking good and let's start the consumer let's start the producer and see so let's go to the consumer let's start so let's come to the producer okay now let's start the producer as well and the things will be super fast wow this is cool right wow okay okay so it took 10 seconds actually this is not bad okay right so 10.6 seconds so we are we were able to emit 1 million items it would have already consumed everything actually okay so so this is cool so we almost emitted the last item 12410 if you see 899 so like three millisecond delay so this is cool actually so it kind of consumed everything okay so now i am in the sender option there is something called maximum in flight okay the maximum in flight i'm going to change that to 10000 okay what that 10,000 means and I'll, let's talk about that later okay so now let me start the producer one more time now if you see now it emitted the whole 1 million events in like three seconds okay this is cool last item emitted it was like 12 42 03 823 and 853 okay so it kind of emitted everything super fast 
okay so what is this what is this ma what kind of magic is doing so in this case can i put 5 million here something like this you might be having this kind of questions so let's discuss what does the maximum in flight do okay so i'm going to explain that using my blog winsguru.com if you want you can go there there is one post about reactor limit rate example i'm going to use this mainly because i think that it's decently documented of course i will be biased so you have to bear with that okay so okay let me scroll down maybe yeah okay let me use this as an example okay so that the producer consumer and all right these are like little bit confusing terms it also depends on the context see anything could be a producer anything could be a consumer so if, if you see in terms of application uh, order service is a producer inventory service is a consumer right but if you see within that application the flux dot range that is a producer the kafka sender sends right that is a consumer or subscriber you are getting right so it it all depends on the context how you see see actually so the flux dot range it produces items here as part of the subscribe in our producer example as here we consume all these events and sending it to we are sending it to kafka at the producer side okay so okay so this is what happens so what's really going on here is that right there is something called a free prefetch actually okay that is remember that in the reactive pipeline things will be working based on the subscriber back pressure i mean subscriber processing speed there is something called a back pressure that is if the subscriber is slow this guy will not emit items it does not make any sense for this guy to emit items if this guy is not keeping up right that is the whole point of creating the reactive programming in the first place to provide the back pressure right okay so the back pressure is controlled by the limit rate if you do not provide anything by default it's 256 okay you can control if you want you can put 10 we can provide um 10 million whatever you want you can give actually okay so you can control how we want actually okay so what will really really hap what's really happening here is that right the prefetch the queue size is 256 256 that is the the flux dot range the producer it will emit 256 items and it will wait for sender to send those 256 items into the kafka um, into kafka only then the producer will produce more items actually okay because it has to drain the queue okay remember this is not a kafka queue this is internally it's happening within the jvm actually within the producer side okay so this queue has to be drained by the subscriber okay so since we emit 256 256 something like this so things will be a little bit slow so when you say 10000 you are free prefetch size is has increased so the the source can or the emitter can pro, emit items a little bit faster because of that we were able to emit 1 million items lot sooner or faster actually okay this word it's going on if you check the log how it works probably um that time it will kind of it will be um very clear but hopefully the, whatever i have explained so far it kind of helped you to clarify okay so in some cases if you are going to emit items by using flux in a reactive way you might want to control the maximum in flight if you want if you want a high extremely high speed throughput items okay so you might want to use this but the point of the, the disadvantages of increase um, increasing the maximum in flight right if you increase that to 10 million or something like this what will happen is basically where do you think that the items will be everything all the items will be in the memory okay so you might get out of memory error as well so you might want to, you might want to be a little bit careful okay Hey guys in this lecture let's take a look at sending headers and consuming headers information okay so for that i'm going to create another section section 04 so i'm going to copy these two and paste it here we want both producer and consumer so i'm going to paste it here and i'm going to modify here and there 
first I'm going to update the producer. So we do not want the maximum in flight. This is too much that for a simple demo. And here, right, I'm also do not want like million or so, like 10 is enough in for this quick demo. Okay, so uh, here, right, uh, we are going to send along, we are going to emit the producer record along with the, uh, the header information. So I am going to create a separate method for me. I feel like that would be better instead of putting everything here. It will be a little bit confusing. Okay. So I'm going to emit sender record. The sender record of it's a string t sorry key type, string value type, and a string the result type. Okay. So create sender record. And here I would be getting a long some input, some i, okay. The, the, whatever the flux range, that value, I'm going to pass it here, okay. So uh, let me cut this, okay. So this is the producer record, right? Okay. So then we are returning sender record dot create. You are saying, okay, you know what? Let me copy this guy. This is super easy. I should have done this, okay. Okay, so now if you check this, oops, if you check this, okay, so integer partition key value and header information, okay, so we can pass this. Let's add the headers. So for that, I'm going to create var headers is equals new record headers, okay, record headers, okay, so the record headers comes from apache kafka common header okay so headers dot add so here you can provide client id whatever you want to give you can save some some anything you like okay some client so actually this is in uh, bytes string key byte value okay so get bytes okay so this guy should be happy now okay and uh, similarly maybe you are you want some distributed tracing the tracing id okay so basically whatever you want to give you can give guys okay so one two three something like that okay we can give something so if you go if you check this guy here right so we want integer partition key value and iterable of headers so here i'm going to say null so the partition i am setting this as null so that using this key value it will find the partition if i are otherwise i can explicitly say that go to partition number one something like this okay you can also say this okay so now we want the iter block headers right so be, be, sorry yeah this okay let me check this it's iter block header so this record headers kind of extends that or implements that so this should work okay so that's it i think we no longer need this kind of stuff we have already seen the demo center close you can re remove all these things map dot here i can say kafka producer create center record that's it which complains incompatible type integer oh this is an integer okay sorry about that okay and i think at this point they should be fine okay so the producer looks good now let's go to the consumer uh, here we are only printing only the, the actual key value right so now let's also print as part of the do on next we we'll let's also print the header information so for that if you say r r dot headers so here it will be giving you for okay so here if you notice it's a list okay so we have to use the for each okay so okay so the for each now you will be getting the header information for each and every header you want to print log dot info you can say header key and value something like that okay so we can provide this information here so you have to say provide header key 
okay and header value that will be in the byte array right okay so yeah i'm going to say new string h dot value okay so you can say it like this and at this point that's it guys so let's start this application i'm starting the consumer and i'm going to the producer i'm going to start the producer wow it's super fast it produced everything now if you see we can actual key value header key client id some client and the tracing id actually we send the same value but if you want to um, add the, the number as well you can also try so basically yeah we are getting both um, the actual the message key message value header information etc okay hey guys in this lecture we are going to run multiple instances of our consumer in a group and we are going to see how the partition assignment the rebalancing they are all working okay for that i am going to create a separate package called section 05 okay and i'm going to set up the package first okay so i'm going to for the consumer i'm going to copy the lecture 01 kafka consumer so i'm going to paste it and i'm going to remove the lecture 01 paste it like a kafka consumer okay okay for the producer i'm going to get it from the section 02 kafka producer and i'm going to paste it here and I'm going to clean up here and there okay so this is the goal okay and uh, for the interval I'm going to keep this as a every 50 millisecond we are going to emit value okay and here right I'm going to take 10,000 items actually okay this is an amount of items we are going to take but everything else looks good to me okay mm, that's it because we will be kind of yeah we, we we have to run this for some time to see how the partition assignment the rebalancing is going to work so for that i, I want to emit decent amount of items okay for the consumer side right we want to run multiple instances of this application and each and every instance should be having a separate instance id as well so instead of the public static void main i'm going to start call this as a start something like this okay start consumer and i'm going to remove this and i'm going to pass instance id here and whatever the instance id i'm getting i'm going to pass it here so this is a very super simple refactor that's what i have done now here i'm going to create another class called kafka consumer group okay something like this so here i'm going to have multiple classes actually so private static class consumer one something like this okay so here it's going to have private public static void main actually okay so kafka consumer from section five and start i'm going to say instance one okay so if you want to run multiple instances why are you doing this hard way intellij provides parallel run something like that we can also do that but i don't want to assume that everyone using intellij okay so for me this approach will work for everybody i guess okay so now i'm going to copy this few times okay so this is consumer two and this is consumer three Oops, I also have to update this guy. Okay, two and three. Okay, so now we are having three consumers. Okay, we actually each and everything will be starting a separate the consumer. Okay, three different JVMs, different consumer. Okay, so they all will be running part of the consumer group. Okay, so the consumer group already given here so only the instance id is going to be changing action okay so we have to create a topic with the three partitions currently our topic has only one partition please ensure that uh, we have a topic with three partitions so let's do that so let's go back to the terminal let's delete the topic what are we have created so far other events deleted now i'm going to create with the three partitions okay partitions three okay 
So now let's start the consumer one. Ensure that your uh, Kafka server is up and running. Now if you check the log, right? Since we have only one consumer, all the partitions 0, 1, 2, they all have been assigned to this consumer. Okay. So which is good. Okay. So now the producer, actually 50 millisecond, I feel like it's a little bit too much. Um, things will be kind of super fast, but it's fine. Okay. So let's see how things will be working actually. Okay. So if you want to adjust, increase the time, um, increase the time actually, because sometimes you might not be able to check the log. See, this is super fast actually. So we are getting values. This guy continuously emitting values, which is good. Okay. So now let's go to the group, um, consumer group. Let's start the second consumer. Okay. So this consumer will be part of this consumer group, right? Okay. So it started, wow, super fast and it started getting the values. Okay. Now if you see, sorry guys. Okay. It's difficult to check the log. Okay. So if you see, uh, it says that it has assigned a partition two to this consumer. Now, if you go and check this guy, if you scroll up slowly, you should be able to find some log somewhere. Okay. So it says that revoke previously assigned partition. So it removed everything 0, 1, 2, and it has assigned 0 and 1 partition. The 2 has been given to this guy. Okay. So now it was consuming up to 4, 1, 1. So suddenly all these events are gone, right? You might think like this oh, what happened to 12? 13 all those stuff if you scroll up right see all that 12 13 14 15 16 everything would have come to this guy okay so the 20 would have gone to um, here actually okay so it has two partitions so it will be getting more data this has only one partition okay so remember that as well okay so now things are going fine okay before we reach the 10,000 let me start the third consumer as well okay so again it will be requesting okay this is fast actually okay so now partition 2 has been assigned to this guy so initially it was doing having the partition 2 so if you scroll up okay so we can see that revoke partition 2 and assign partition 1 basically it removed one from this guy and they gave it to this guy and it took two from this guy and they gave it to this guy okay so okay so this is what it's doing actually okay so this is great things are okay so we are getting all the values okay okay so there is there will not be any issue with the producer side producer does not care how the partition assignment happens rebalancing happens okay so it will keep on producing values so kafka will kind of assign something to these consumers and it will be um, yeah these guys are consuming these values okay so this is cool okay so now i am going to stop the consumer three okay consumer three is dead okay so now if you kind of check okay it's very, actually it's kind of difficult to see if you scroll up slowly we can check the log or it might come later because it also depends on the the session timeout etc okay so if you do not see you have to kind of scroll slowly again up and down you have to check the log somewhere it should be there okay so what happened was initially it was doing one right now because this three is dead so it removed one and assigned back uh, partition two to this consumer okay so because of this the three four even though it, it, it was processing in the four thousand range the three four one five and all it was supposed to process but it was um it died so this guy has got all these values basically we are not losing anything okay so that's what i'm trying to say here okay so similarly let's kill this guy as well two now two is gone three is gone so ideally it's supposed okay now 
it, it should be getting both partitions actually i mean all the partitions okay i think it's because of the login okay if you increase the time you can see, see this actually better okay so yes so it has um they ha it has been assigned all the partitions and now it's getting all the the partition from all i mean sorry value well, events from all the partitions actually okay so it was processing in the 6000 range now it has to process the old events which are coming from the other partition as well so it will process that okay hey guys in this lecture i'm going to demo something similar to what we have done like the partition assignment but it's a different strategy actually okay this will be useful in some cases so i'm going to create a section 06 package okay and i'm going to copy only the calf consumer and the consumer group we do not need the producer we are going to simply take a look at how things are working here okay first let me start this consumer we have already seen this but still i would like to show you this okay so uh, if you notice here the partition 0 1 2 has been assigned to this guy okay so 0 1 and 2 okay so the okay so now if i start consumer 2 right as you know this guy will be getting the partition 2 okay so and it also revoked the existing partition um that's what it we we, we have already seen this right revoked previously assigned the partition now we got it it took um is assigned two to this guy so it took uh, we took removed two from this guy okay so now it's like this now let me start the third consumer so what will happen is now this guy will be getting the partition two and this guy would be removed the partition number two and it will be given one instead so this got two we stopped this guy and assigned one and we took one from this guy so this is how the partition assignment works okay so this is the default behavior of kafka actually okay so sometimes uh, you might not like this behavior okay so let's stop this let's stop everything okay let's stop everything okay so what we can do is there is something called a partition assignment strategy okay so configuration so which we can provide actually so consumer config partition assignment strategy here we can provide the another implementation cooperative sticky assigner class okay so which implementation you like to use so we can provide like this get name it's an actually a we can also um provide our own implementation as well okay so it's implementing that interface so if we go back okay so it's if we can also provide our own implementation actually if you want okay anyway then let's not go there okay so when we use this let's see what happens okay so again i'm going to remove this now you saw how it worked so um, let me remove this guy remove this guy and i'm going to start from this one single consumer okay so of course it will start from 0 1 2 okay so let's see okay so if you notice this strategy is slightly different that the logging information has slightly changed okay but we got 0 1 2 because in this case we have only one consumer so this is normal for us to get all the partitions okay so now if you start this guy so I have just started partition and okay now this got two as usual okay now this would have been removed two actually so now we have got zero and one this is fine okay so now you might hey where is the difference you might think like this actually yes the, i'll come to that now let me run this three okay so now if you check this okay so this guy got one that is see the, the whole point of 
doing this partition assignment right to balance the work across multiple consumers okay however the previous approach what it will do is that it will kind of stop everything uh, pull from this guy and give it to this guy this kind of stuff this will be doing like this but instead right this time we did not touch this guy instead oh it has more partitions okay so let me take one from this guy and give it to this guy okay so this is what it did and it let it this guy so let it continue um, basically the partition number two actually okay so if you go and check it still consuming the partition number two okay so this is another strategy okay if this is something like if you want you can go for this approach okay so this is called cooperative oops where is it okay yeah cooperative sticky assigner um, implementation okay so this is basically just to avoid pulling I mean changing all the consumers instead um, just basically uh, uh, reassignment rebalancing but here we have more so take it from this guy and give it to this guy don't let's not disturb this guy something like this okay so that is the idea if this is the cooperative sticky assigner uh, implementation then what is the default behavior is there any name for it actually the default name is called the range assigner okay so range assigner okay so this is the one the range assigner so how that will work okay so let's see for that i'm going to explain that here okay so range assigner the way in which the range assigner works is that it will take all the partition and it will sort them okay so if you sort the number will be 0 0 1 and 2 okay now it will also take all the members and it will sort based on the instance the id actually configuration so when the consumer one joins of course we have only one consumer so they it will get everything so 0 1 2 okay when the consumer two joins what it will do is that again it will sort based on the name instance name id config okay it will sort and it will try it will try to divide this between these two okay so if it's let's say for the to keep math simple let's assume that we have 0 1 2 3 4 partitions okay so that time this guy will be getting 0 1 1 and uh, this guy will be getting 2 and 3 it will try to divide between these two okay evenly okay so this is how it will get okay but sin in this case we have only 0 1 2 this guy will be getting 0 and 1 this guy will be getting only 2 okay so now when we have one more consumer joining right again we will be sorting and uh, this time it's easy to assign 0 1 and this guy will be getting 2 okay so this is how the range assigner works okay hey guys in this lecture we are going to see how to seek offset so for that i'm going to create a separate package section 07 okay and i'm going to copy the lecture 01 kafka consumer paste it here this demo will be simple and uh, yes so kafka consumer and i'm changing the name okay so we can remove everything and the goal is to to seek offset okay that's it super simple okay before we talk about this right i still have my order events topic with the three partitions and if you remember i had emitted they had emitted like 10000 items so it's still there so if it's not there probably like maybe let's create a topic uh, with a few partitions and they emit few items okay so that we can understand this demo better actually okay okay so now the receiver options right it has some method which uh, which are which will be useful in some cases for example there is something called add assign listener okay so when assign when the partition is assigned right so we can provide a callback okay we can provide a callback here so it will be giving you a collection of receiver partition so what is that okay so it's a collection so i'm going to say c and uh, i'm going to provide some callback and see what's going to do okay uh, so c is a okay it's a collection right c dot for each and here we are going to get a receiver partition so r and i'm going to say log dot info i'm going to say assigned something like that okay and i'm going to say r dot position the position is the offset number 
actually okay so let's run this let's first run this then we can discuss okay so we have three partitions partition 0 1 2 and these are my offset current position because i have already acknowledged all the 10,000 items I have already consumed all those events acknowledged so these are my offset 3419 okay these are my offset in each and every partition actually that's what it gives me that information okay so what I'm going to do with that you might ask like this where where do we think that it will be useful okay so actually this also has some method like for example r.seek okay using which we can go back okay to a specific offset if you want for example let's consider this scenario if you, if you remember when the consumer starts when we say earliest it will be giving me all the events starting from the beginning okay if i have not acknowledged before okay otherwise we can say latest but if you want to say uh, I, I don't want to go to the beginning and I also do not want only the new events I want the last 10 items okay can you start can we start from the last 10 last two last three something like this if you have such a requirement right so this will be extremely useful actually okay so for example here what I'm going to do is that c dot for each as usual r and I would like to go back by like two position some that, that, that's what I'm saying for each and every partition can you give me the last two items I want to start from there that's what you are saying actually okay so now if you rerun this you will be getting six items okay six items because for, uh, I mean you want to go back by two for each and every partition so we have three partitions so we got six items actually this is cool right so it says that these are the actual offset but you are seeking to offset you are going back by two okay so two positions that's what it says so this is cool okay so again if you do not want to go to the earliest if you do not want to go to the latest so if you want to start from something in between some cases this will be extremely useful actually okay remember that this number cannot be negative okay here i am kind of confidently giving minus 2 is mainly because i know for sure that this number is a big number here okay because of that it works if you it could be zero as well who knows so you might want to check before you seek okay just be careful okay so what else we can do with this actually what we can do is that we can also instead of asking for each and every partition we can also go to a specific partition if you like c dot stream okay now I'm checking filter okay so R I'm going to look for partition number two if I am getting the partition number two okay topic partition dot partition this will be giving me the partition number okay partition number integer if it's two then find first okay it's a it's a this is Java 8 stream so give me the first item okay find first okay partition if present it's optional so r r dot seek uh, r dot position minus two something like that okay so i am interested in only from the partition number two and i would like to get only the last two items in the partition number two okay so okay so now let me rerun this Now it it gives me only those two items from the partition number two. Okay, so this is cool. So as I said, if if you do not want to go to the beginning or if you do not want to go to the latest, something if you want to start from somewhere in the middle depends on the partition. All those things, yes, you have using this option. Okay, so you can control actually. We also have few. Uh, methods like seek right the seek can accept the position seek or seek to beginning you can also go to the the earliest using this option okay end or seek to timestamp okay so you also have few other options actually hey guys let's quickly summarize whatever we had done in this section our goal in this 
section was to set up a project with the reactor kafka and to develop a simple uh, kafka producer consumer application so we were able to do that and we also learned um, how to acknowledge a message how the consumer group works the partition assignment rebalancing strategy seeking offset etc so we have learned a decent amount of things actually okay so but it we are not done yet okay so we still have a lot more things to cover like error handling um the transaction compression so so many stuff we have to learn and we also will be bringing spring and we will be developing an application etc so there are a lot more things to come okay in this section we are going to set up kafka cluster using kraft mode and see ourselves how kafka cluster is highly available and horizontally scalable etc by doing that we will also be learning few things better like a replication and how kafka is able to um, achieve high availability that is the idea we have seen this enough already but i'm going to clarify or add a few more things so i will have to start from the beginning one more time sorry about that so we have multiple servers running here when we start the server we specify roles like you are going to run as a broker you are going to run as a controller you are going to run as a broker and a controller something like that so we can specify roles for each and every node even though we can specify controller role to multiple nodes only one of them will be the active controller or our main controller so they will be kind of doing voting among themselves and they will select their leader so active controller okay okay so now me as a developer i would like to create a topic topic is an abstract topic is nothing but a collection of partitions we have already discussed this so if you want performance and scaling you would need to create a topic with more partitions so let's imagine that i am creating order events topic with two partitions so what this controller will do is oh you want a topic with the two partition so it will identify two nodes basically hey you are going to be the leader for partition 0 you are going to be the leader for partition 1 something like that okay now i also want high availability okay so i don't want to depend on one node so in this case i can also specify that i want the data to be replicated in another brokers to be safe so when i create a topic along with the partition i can also specify an option called replication factor so now you might ask why did i not talk about this earlier i would have done this something like this right but that time we were running one single node so the replication does not make any sense there actually okay so the replication factor makes perfect sense in the cluster when you run multiple nodes actually okay okay so now when i say replication i can also specify the replication factor when i create a topic if i say replication factor as 3 what the controller or what it means is that okay so we already have one copy for partition 0 in the leader okay so then it will identify two two more nodes okay so you are going to be the leader for partition 0 and you are going to be the followers for partition 0 these two node it will identify similarly this node will be the leader for partition 1 and these two nodes will be the follower for partition 1 something like that so as and when when they get somebody writes to this partition right this will also be sending that information to other nodes actually so it will be replicated immediately okay okay so when the controller identifies these nodes right what it will do is that it will be publishing that information to the entire cluster to all the brokers using the topic called cluster metadata if you remember i had already shown that to you and it is an internal topic actually so it will be publishing that information saying that i have selected these guys as a no um, leader follower all those information it will be publishing that information to the topic so each and every broker will be subscribing to the topic so they will be knowing what is going on in the cluster so let's imagine that this guy 
there is one server okay it does not have any partition it does not have any replica let's assume so however this guy will still be subscribing to the topic so when we use this node as a bootstrap server when this application connects to this node since it has subscribed to that the cluster metadata right it will it, it knows what is going on in the cluster who is the leader who is the follower so this node um, knows everything so it will be giving that information to this application okay so this is how things are working in a kafka cluster we can see three different types of communication one is controller talking among themselves control plane then other one is broker talking among themselves or replicating data etc that's a data plane then our application might want to talk to the broker for producing and consuming data okay so we can see three different types of communication among these three right the two are happening among themselves okay within that cluster okay so the outside world does not have to worry about this actually so when i say outside world i'm i'm saying about the producer and the consumer application okay so this could be happening within the cluster or within the subnet where these are all running actually okay the, the, these two communication okay so a kafka server can listen on multiple ports for multiple reasons okay so these are all called listeners so it might be uh, opening a port for control communication this might be opening another port for just for internal data plane communication and maybe we can also use another port for just producing and the consuming data this kind of stuff okay so okay if kafka server is going to listen on multiple ports how does this guy will know that it has to hit this server on this specific port okay so basically each and every server right so they they will have to provide their information that is i am going to use this for our internal communication that is this could be a private ip address which will be accessible only within the subnet okay and this can also this also has to share another ip address and then the port it's go, it's it will be listening on for external communication okay so this is how normally we set things up okay so if it's confusing no worries we are going to set up the kafka cluster using docker compose in the next lecture so that time when we play with that probably we will be understanding this better okay hey guys in this lecture we are going to set up the docker compose kafka cluster so in a high level this is how it is going to be i am going to spin up three different docker containers kafka containers um, in a network actually okay so both the controller communication broker communication will be happening within the docker um, network then for the external communication by external i mean the producer consumer application um, con communication so we we will be listening on port specific ports actually okay so then i will be doing the host port mapping 80881 so that our producer application or consumer application can talk to the kafka container okay feel free to change the port if you do not like it for some reason okay let's go to our workspace here i have actually already shared the docker compose file for the kafka cluster as part of the resources download earlier so copy the 03 kafka cluster and paste it here so here i have the docker compose file and here we have some properties let's quickly review this here i am creating three different docker containers for the same image means docker kafka if you notice and i am giving different name for the service kafka 1 kafka 2 kafka 3 that is the exact name i am also keeping for the container name okay kafka 1 kafka 2 kafka 3 okay so we are also doing some port mapping here the port part how things are connected we will come to that later okay then the environment so if you remember i had told you the cluster id right so this is super important inf information also we need to have one cluster id and if multiple servers are going to be part of the cluster ID, cluster they all should know what cluster they belong to okay so this is why i'm giving the exact same cluster id for each and every node okay okay super important and under props here i am having three different property files 
okay so the s stand basically just i mean to say server 1 server 2 server 3 that's why i kind of named it like this and i am mapping the s1 properties with the kafka config care of server properties here for this container i'm using s2 for this container i am using s3 okay so we will take a look at these properties in a minute okay and then uh, you know this temp Kafka log this is where it logs but remember that I am mapping a different directory b1 b2 b3 because these are like three different containers okay so do not try to do this way because what will happen is that right two containers will be trying to write to the same directory things will easily mess up I have opened s1 properties s2 properties side by side so that we can compare and see where things are matching where things are different so that it will give us a clue of how things are connected and why we are doing certain things certain way okay okay so here i am mapping s1 properties with the kafka one mapping s2 properties with the kafka 2 container we know this okay so let's see one by one so the process roles here i am saying that hey kafka one container you are going to be both broker and controller role this is the role i am assigning so this is exactly the same thing i am doing here as well okay so the node id is here the node id is one here the node id is two so they cannot have a diff same node id M multiple machines cannot have the same node id in a cluster okay so they all should be given different ids actually okay then listener if you remember we had talked about this kafka server can listen on multiple ports for different purposes so one is for controller communication other one is for interbroker communication so i am saying that for the internal internal 9092 controller 9093 and external 8081 okay okay just because i say internal external and controller kafka will not understand all these things from kafka perspective you are going to listen on these ports 9092 9093 and 8081 we are giving some name for the these listeners actually i can even give vinod if i want here okay i can even give vinod and make things work but i have to give some meaningful name because of that i am giving internal controller external okay now even though I am listening on among these listeners, right? Among these three listeners, which is for inter um, broker communication? I have to explicitly say that, oh, use internal for inter broker communication. Okay. And uh, again, for the controller communication, which one should I use? So Kafka will ask. So we are saying that use controller for your controller communication. So we are giving that name here. If I had mentioned Vinod here, then I have to give Vinod here. You are, you are getting right. Now you get the point how things are connected actually. Okay. Okay. Now, then let's come to this part. Advertised listeners. Okay. So this is the one which is kind of, kind of, will be confusing actually. Okay. Now, up to this point, we are talking about this Kafka one container. Okay. Okay. Now, Kafka server will be like, okay, I'm going to listen on 9092. That's fine. I'm going to open all these ports for you. Okay. Now, somebody else, when I say somebody else, right? This is Kafka 1 container. Now, think about the other container, Kafka 2, Kafka, Kafka 3 containers, right? Okay. If they want to talk to this container, how they can reach this container? So, we are saying that, oh, my name is in that case my name is kafka one because that is the name we are assigning to this container my name is kafka one and i'm listening on 9092 for internal communication so they can reach me using this name okay so this is how you are saying actually okay okay great what about the external communication so the external communication they can reach me on localhost 8081 now if I say localhost inside the container, is it not the container? What does it mean? How can I give localhost? It might be a little bit confusing. But remember that this is the advertised listener, right? You have to think from the caller perspective. That is, for the inter-broker communication, the Kafka 2 can call this guy using Kafka 1. Okay, The Kafka 3 can call this guy using the, this Kafka 1 name. 
similarly if i am going to do if i am going to do 8081 port mapping with my machine then if i am going to run an application in my machine if if i am going to if i can talk to 8081 localhost right then i am basically reaching this container right so this is exactly what we are saying actually okay so this is from a caller perspective this is how we have to think you are getting right okay or you can also give your machine ip address if you want we can also do this way okay okay now if you see this is exactly what i am doing here as well so 9092 9093 since i am going to you uh, do port mapping for 8082 right so this is why i am using listening on 8082 just so that um, i can advertise like this actually okay so internal kafka to 9092 and it advertises uh, um, for the external communication localhost 8082 something like that now you get the point right okay so let me close this then beyond this point things will be very clear i guess okay then what is this property this property is if you remember i had told you that the controller they will be having some election among them to select their main controller or active controller so who are eligible for voting so for that uh, this is the the format node id at the host name colon port okay so one at kafka 19093 two at kafka 29093 so in this format then listener security protocol map so what is this so um, kafka has four different security protocols the one is uh, one is plain text okay so all the communication is um, all the communication is going to be plain text there is no encryption that's what it means okay the the next one is ssl so here um, kafka will encrypt so ssl tls okay so okay the third one is uh, sa sl minor sorry underscore plain text that is sa sl stands for um, simple authentication security layers username password authentication along with the plain text communication okay so not everyone can talk to the kafka server directly so there will be a username password using that kafka server will authenticate first then it will allow the connection you are getting right something like that okay then sa sl along with the ssl okay so now you get the point okay so here as part of this property what we are seeing here is i have i have a listener called controller the controller is going to use plain text okay and i have listener called internal that is going to use plain text and i have listener called external that is also going to be plain text so basically you are mapping the listener along with security protocol that's it nothing else you're getting right we can also say that uh, it is is it going to be sasl um, ssl you can also say like this if you want encryption username password authentication etc okay so we'll talk about that later for the time being i'm going to keep things simple so i'm going to keep this plain text okay so this is exactly what i am doing here so now you might ask what is this then okay plain text is plain text ssl is ssl sa pl plain text same so why are we doing this way okay actually these are like default listener security protocol map which is part of server dot properties if you open that this is what you will be seeing actually so um, sometimes right what people will do is that instead of creating the same uh, instead of creating a different name because if they create different name we also have to provide this value right controller is plain text we have to give specify that here so because of that what people will do is that right so they will simply say that plain text here directly so that they do not have to do this mapping and all actually you are getting right so okay so i'm going to put this back so these are like default mappings we can just keep it as it is auto create topics enable is false here it's no big deal if you want to change it to true you can change it mainly this is for when you use the kafka console producer console consumer uh, when you use a topic name if it is not there it will automatically create the topic so again it's no big deal you can change it to whatever you like okay so this property this is super important that is if you remember i had already told you that kafka server will be tracking 
where the consumers are or uh, each and every consumer group right up to which offset they have read or they have committed so it will be tracking that information so where do you think that it will be it will be part of one internal topic called consumer offsets okay so it will be tracking all those information actually okay now here we are saying that the replication factor is 3 because we are running three nodes in our cluster so i am saying that three so that that information will be replicated in all the nodes so that we are not depending on one single broker to provide that information okay so if so that if if the node dies so that the other node will be containing the information so that um, it will know that oh you are that consumer i know you have read up to this so that i can give you the rest of the data something like that okay so this information has to be replicated in all the brokers actually okay then this is log directory we know this already hey guys in this lecture we are going to play with our kafka cluster okay so please ensure that you are in the location where you have your the cluster docker compose file okay so okay also during uh, when you play with the kafka cluster right if you ever face any issues okay always remove the data directory and uh, retry okay Okay, so Docker compose up. If I say this, then it will be creating three different Docker containers. Wait for things to start. Looks like they all started, I guess. So I'm going to the other terminal. Now, if I say Docker PS, I should be seeing all those three containers Kafka 1, Kafka 2, Kafka 3. Everything should be up and running. Okay, so this is super cool actually. Okay, so now. I'm going to access one of the container. I'm going to use Kafka one. We can use whatever we like. Okay, great. Okay, so this is a brand new cluster. Does not have any topic, anything like that, right? So here I am going to um, create the um, our order events topic actually. Okay, some simple topic, any name. You can create hello world topic. Doesn't really matter. So create something order events okay create and i am going to say partitions two okay i want two partitions for this topic okay now when i when you run a single node plus when you run a single node kafka server right you cannot specify the replication factor now we run multiple server right we can also specify the replication factor here it makes sense so replication replication factor so i want three copies okay three replicas so that's what you are saying so if you say create now things would be created actually okay so now let me clear this and let me describe this so that we can see what is going on here okay okay now if you see this order even topic this is a topic id we have two partition replication factor is three now, last time we didn't cover this, mainly because at the time we didn't talk about this, the replication and all. So now it makes sense. It is three. Okay. So we have two partition, partition zero, partition one. It says that the, for the partition one, the leader is one, the Kafka one, the node ID one. For the partition zero, the leader is three. Okay. That's what it says. And we have replicas in node ID one, node ID two, node ID three. That's what here also it says actually. Okay. And what is ISR? ISR means in sync replicas. That is whatever the data I have for the leader, um, that is what I'm also having uh, with the, these nodes. Basically, they are all in sync. That's what it says, actually. Okay. In other words, that's what it says. Every, all the nodes, they are all having the same data. Everyone is in sync. Okay. Okay. So now it says that leader is three for partition zero, right? That's what it says, right? Okay. So now I'm going to say Docker PS. This is the node ID 3, right? Okay. Let me stop Kafka 3. I'm going to stop the server, Kafka 3 server. So let it stop. Okay. It stopped. If I say Docker PS, I'm running only Kafka 1, Kafka 2. So what will happen here? Let me describe one more time. Now, if you see, it changed the leader actually. Okay. 
so partition zero the leader one okay so part for partition zero this is one is the leader even for the partition one one is the leader okay and if you see the replicas in three nodes actually one two three but only one and two they are only they are in sync i'm not really sure what happened to node three so it's down something like this that's what it says okay so we can bring this up okay so if you check okay so now it came up that is also in sync that's what it says okay okay so we can also try to uh, stop oops sorry about that stop kafka 2 i mean the same thing okay let's try what will happen here now only one and three in sync two not sure what happened to node two that's what it says actually okay we can also stop node one but i'm already in the node one so maybe we can try to stop node one let's see okay i will be disconnected but that's fine let me copy this let me copy this let's stop okay i have already stopped kafka 2 i am also going to stop kafka 1 now i will be okay now if i say docker ps i am having only kafka 3 is up and running okay so now let's say docker exec minus it kafka 3 bash okay now i'm going to run this command and it has selected leader 3 as the leader sorry it has selected node 3 as the leader for both partitions and only that is in sync this is cool right hey guys now we are going to have another demo so i would like to start from scratch my kafka cluster is still up and running i'm going to delete the topic and i'm going to recreate this one more time okay so create the topic and i want only one partition i do not want to have multiple partition it's mainly because i we are going to keep on producing um, values and we are going to consume values i am going to bring this server up and down actually so i would like to see how things are um, working actually both at the producer side and the consumer side okay and uh, so by having one partition it will help us to see um, the values better okay so that the order will be maintained that is the reason so partition is going to be one so i don't have to specify that by default that will be one partition and the replication factor okay so i'm going to add the replication factor and i would like to have three okay so now the order even topic is created with one partition and three replicas then i'm going to describe once so in my case actually the order even topic we have only one partition and we have um, three replicas everything in sync all the three nodes and the leader is three okay so the node three right that's that is what has been elect, uh, elected as leader for this topic for this partition actually now let's come back to our IntelliJ here I'm going to create a new package called section 08 and I'm going to copy this consumer and the producer okay this and this okay copy this from section 5 and I'm going to paste it here okay so I'm going to modify a couple of things. So uh, here, this is actually good. I don't have any issues here. So let's keep it like this. And the consumer here, right? Okay, so here I have to add, okay, the string args. Okay, I'm going to keep this as a main method actually. Okay, so that we can call this and the instance ID going to be one okay so i'm going to keep this as demo group so basically yeah this is what i am doing before start our consumer i would like to change the port to 8081 because 9092 is no longer applicable right so in our cluster we have only 8081 8082 and 8083 i can give comma separated a list of all the three ip um, um, all the three bro brokers if i like but i do not want to give okay so i, I intentionally want to keep it like this and i want to show um, this actually so it's right one 
and then let me go to the producer here also i'm going to change it to 8081 okay so both the producer and the consumer they use the same broker as a bootstrap server that is totally fine actually okay so now let me start the consumer first okay so the consumer has started and uh, as you as we have done now so we have given only 8081 okay so now if you scroll all the way back right down now if you check here right okay it knows that localhost 8083 okay that is the leader for this partition see it got this information actually this is cool right so using this it should be able to connect to the broker actually so this is how this is why we are advertising as a local host or something like this again if you want to give ip address you can also give actually okay but this is cool okay so it got that information okay so now uh, let me start the producer as you know this is 50 millisecond and it will be super fast uh, but that's okay we have only one partition so wow it started producing and we have started getting values here okay so now what i'm going to do is that let, let me describe one more time so everything is going fine right okay so now in the background if you see values are being consumed okay so now as usual i am going to stop one kafka node which is three because that is the leader right if you notice that is a leader so i am going to stop that guy i'm going to see whether it's going to throw exception or not let's see okay start okay now if you see the background things are still running right and let me describe this and it says the leader okay one is the leader okay so there are two things in sync one and two one is the leader but if you notice if you let me scroll up the there there should be something okay now if you see right uh node three disconnected but still things are working actually okay so we got this message but still if you see notice seven one seven one seven seven one eight we did not lose any value actually so things are still continuing actually this is the this is the reason i did not want to use multiple partition actually so that we can see this better and similarly there there will be something here as well there should be something no okay okay disconnected okay but things are still continuing here anyway okay so which is good so now uh, let me go back to the consumer check the log okay things are still running now we can bring this back maybe we can stop Kafka okay Kafka okay leader okay one is the leader right okay maybe you know what let's bring that also down that was our bootstrap server if you remember that is our bootstrap server we also brought that down actually our bootstrap server is also down but still this guy doesn't seem to stop actually this is cool right things are still working even though two nodes are down it's still producing it's still consuming this is cool okay so it knows that the nodes are getting down went down nodes went down and all it knows this actually which is good okay so what will happen if you bring the kafka to um, see that time the entire cluster is down so of course that, that, that's a big problem okay that time the entire cluster is down okay so now let's bring this guy up okay oh i was part of the kafka one okay actually that's why i got disconnected here so let me describe the topic one more time okay so two is the leader okay so let's also bring kafka three up okay so now if i describe see they all they are all in sync now actually this is cool guys right let's quickly summarize what we did in this section we were able to set up a Kafka cluster with the Docker containers. We were able to create a topic with the multiple partitions and a replication factor as well. So that Kafka could elect multiple leaders uh, for each partition and it also created the followers for our topic partition to replicate the data for high availability. 
we also noticed that how the bootstrap server was able to give other server information to our application so that our application was able to contact the appropriate broker actually so once connected uh, doesn't really matter so the even the bootstrap server can go down it doesn't really matter so as long as we have one broker running among n replica server um, then we should be good actually